Hello, welcome to the Honest Wargamer. I'm Yost Rob. Dad's not ready, even with an intro. <laughs> no, I was. I was ready that time. I swear to God, I was like, I was trying to vamp into it, like just being just engaged. I guess. Do a turn. Yeah. Just, uh, just. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. Uh, oh hi. Yes, it was the Age of Sigma Monday show, filmed live 7 p.m. Uh, in the UK uh, on Twitch. If you want to join us, as the wonderful people in the chats like Phil Spriggers, Val Heffelfinger, Tobias are in the chat. I'm joined by Dan. What up, Dan? I'm um, great. How are you? Great, great, great. I'm going to ask you more about how you are. I'm just introing you. Dan, the man, the legend, the myth. <laughs> there's there's never been a man more confident and also more correct that he's brilliant than Dan. Uh, and we're joined by our special guest for today is a superstar. Uh, one of the best people in the world, Dom. Uh, hello, Dom. How you doing? Yeah, good, Rob. Yeah, pleasure to be here, mate. Oh. Awesome, Dom. Uh, super happy to have Dom on. Uh, we're going to be talking later on, after we kind of ask everyone how they're doing, we're going to be talking about what it's like to uh, to be best sports, which Rob, uh, Dom, sorry, has already won today. So congratulations, Dom, uh, on another trophy. <laughs> yes. He's, 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 also, he's also won it on this show already, like just between the three of us. So yeah. like two trophies one day. Good start. Yeah, good start. So we're going to be talking about that and, and what it takes. And also, I think uh, a little bit about the culture on the tabletop of Age of Sigma, maybe what uh, we could expect from events and also uh, what we can expect from um, what we think maybe should move towards being like a standard uh, of gamesmanship at events because I think there's a really good conversation there especially because I think Dom uh, his community uh, the Nine Inch Fails and everyone around him uh, are really good representatives of that here in the UK uh, Dan uh, obviously you're a good representative of that way you are because you're perfect uh, so uh, and then yeah and Canadians are super pleasant so that's they're, they're are you a Canadian a now uh, uh, I, well like I'm both I'm, a, I'm an Austro-Canadian okay all right no one's had that no one never believes you, I don't think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but before we get into that, uh, Dom, as our guest, uh, how have you been? What have you been up to the past couple of weeks? Got any Warhammer in? What have you been up to? Yeah, no, I've been good. Yeah, quite quite a bit of Warhammer, actually. I've been at, um, I was at a little local one-day event on Saturday, which was, which was really good fun um, in Kent, where I live. So that was good. Took the trogs out for a spin. Um, that was a lovely little one there. Quite a few new players there, um, which, which was always nice to see. Um, and then we just filmed a battle report for our channel as well, just last weekend. The Gits versus Iron Jaws, so we'll be putting that out soon, hopefully. So yeah, quite a bit of hobby, and I'm currently painting up some Stormcast, um, trying to figure out how to write a list that can score more than three battle tactics. When the <laughs> battle tactics are horrendous. So, if, you, if, if, you let, if, if you find out, let us know, right? I will do, but you might be waiting a long time. <laughs> outside, just running like ball dragons, which I don't really want to do, because you know I've got some best sports awards to win. I don't be that guy. So... <laughs> So, yeah, just mainly just painting Stormcast at the moment. So, yeah, but otherwise, good. How come Stormcast is what you're painting? Uh, so, it's just, we wanted, so it's mainly driven, to be honest, by our, by our records we're doing for our battle reports. I've started doing the Nine Inch Fails. So, we're trying to get more of a variety on, on the channel, essentially. And I'll just keep bringing drugs, which I'm reliably informed. <laughs> this isn't what everyone wants to see, which I don't believe. But that's I, what my I, is telling me. That's all I'd want to see, only because yeah. it's unique. Like how yeah, many exactly. report channels just, like here are our Stormcast and you guys are like, let me talk to you about thick lads. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I, let me I'm talk to you about for... trucks or yeah, grots. Well. I'm also paying forty grots, so I'm letting my way through those as well. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, if you um if you're interested, I will include in both the podcast and the YouTube video the link to the YouTube channel that Dom's talking about. Uh, so like do go check it out they're, they're a lovely group of people so please do go check out the videos i watched the first one it was great uh i really enjoyed obeyed one day messaging me being like how do you do videos full time and i'm like <laughs> i'm like thanks finally i think i'd like yeah. everyone in the age of sigma community to just randomly start their own channel at some point and then afterwards they'd be like actually rob that's a lot of videos you've done there mate i'm like thanks buds yeah appreciate you yeah. Uh, especially yeah. especially like okay if, if you go through the whole process of like scripting shooting editing finishing like that's a long process right and you're like oh shit that was long but you have a script to kind of like work off if you just shoot something and then cut it together and what you have is like if you've got multiple cameras you think about it, you've got like six hours of content from different angles and different things to cut together my god it's a lot of work a lot yeah. of work yeah how yeah, have you, you how have you how, how have you and the team found like creating battle reports 
Yeah, yeah, we're really, we're really enjoying it. Yeah, I think like the issue we've got at the moment is it's mainly just one or two people doing all the editing. So like poor Abade, which is probably why his message has been doing about 30, 40 hours a week. So de definitely got a newfound appreciation for, <laughs> for, for, the, for the edit the side of it. But we're, we're really, we've really enjoyed it. Like we've had some like wicked feedback from the community around like stuff they like, stuff they don't like. Um, so yeah, we're loving it at the moment. We're just trying to like uh, tailor it a bit and like just get better at it essentially. So yeah, so far so good. That's good. That's good. And who's yeah. in your little group who do all the bat reports? So there's so the team's made up of it's myself, uh, Abade, um, Hazel Moon, who probably a lot of people know, uh, Philip Springle, who I think is quite well known as well. Um, and then we've got some others like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like Carsten, um, a chap called Max, Will, Nick, um, who is starting to play a bit more in the competitive scene. So people have probably seen him around a bit more. Um, and then we've got Tom and Calm as well. So we've got a group of about nine of us, and we've got pretty much every army covered. It's just finding the time to get people involved, essentially. So, mm. yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that I think that's the biggest challenge. I think, which is good, and just keep the momentum up as well. I think, uh, I think one of the things that people that happens a lot is uh, that first kind of crushing wall of um, work for very little return. It, like, is painful at the start, so it's something you have yeah. to push through, which is really challenging. But please do, because it'd be great. More more bat rep channels, mm. the better. I think out there in the world. Uh, especially yeah. when uh, they're trogs and each one of the trogs has a name. I think that makes it better. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And every single one's trogs just against various <laughs> armies. There's a, there's, there's a guy on <laughs> YouTube who only makes Necron videos. Like his whole thing <laughs> is about Necrons. Mm. And I just absolutely adore the idea that someone just does trogs. Like there's just the trog yeah. cast. Because there's a, there's a, we, for Age mm -hmm. of Sigmar, there's, there's um, a Carriage and Overlords. Yeah, there's a Carriage and Overlords only podcast. I don't know yeah. if there's, like a gits only podcast it should be i feel like nathan and me have probably be. kind of been doing it maybe but not quite yeah that'd be i good. think it was probably a missed opportunity to call that podcast the caradron only lords <laughs> like that feels like a, a just a, a minor missed opportunity <laughs> that'd have been so good that'd be great okay and the one day uh, how did you do it the one day was it fun uh, yeah it was good yeah i won yeah it was good it was good fun yeah i took the, took the trogs for a spin um but yeah it was it was it was it was really good fun yeah three great opponents first player i played it was his first ever tournament actually um so that was a brilliant game because we took we took it the full five rounds and it was he was pushing around seraphon coalesced um so yeah we had a really yeah. good laugh but yeah good good little local tournament in seven oaks if anyone lives locally then yeah definitely give me a shout I can put you in touch with the chap who organises it. All right, perfect. Well, I'm going to include all of Dom's socials in the links below, so uh, hit him up. Dan, what have you been up to, baby? I, well, I already know this because you told us before the show, but tell us again. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to? It's made me oh, jealous all over. I've been, I've been playing the crap out of uh, some Beast of Chaos. and Son just of a bitch. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, I think you and I both, uh, it started at Worlds. It was Best army in the game. Born. Best army in the game. Love, love born in the filth of Amsterdam. Mm. Uh, but honestly, like watching it, I was like, I this this army is tough. Like this army's good. Don't get me wrong. Like it's got a, a really cool, a really high skill ceiling. I think, uh, but it's not easy. And I coming from like dwarves and more tribes, I'm like, okay, my my game plan has been very straightforward. You know, like I I hit, I push, I shoot, I do all that. And there's, there's a lot of tactics there, but playing an army that just punishes you if you fuck up, uh, I was like, I think that's going to make me a better player. Uh, so that's kind of where it started, and I'm just frothing over it. I love it. It's so challenging, and it's really, really rewarding, and I'm just digging every second that, like, a little Ungor achieves something it shouldn't have achieved, or a Bulgor just completely fluffs it, but then somebody else picks it up and uh, and carries the day. I I'm I'm loving it. It's so satisfying. Oh, that's great. Okay, good. All right. Well, that's 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 fun. Are you uh, are you are you going to be trying to like? Is How it many, fully painted uh, already? No, it's being it's in the process of being converted because I also like. Some armies I see and I'm like, hell yeah, I want to paint that, which is like my Votan. There's just no, the only conversions I'm doing on the Votan is clipping off detail uh, because I think that they're overly detailed and there's like all this cool stuff that then they put packs over that completely conceal. So no changes to them. But then when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is a cool conversion army. So I'm uh, my Ungora all old human crossbowmen. And then I have actual goat fur that I'm clipping to make like a short little like straw fur cape and then green stuffing around the shoulders for them and then putting a goat mask on their faces. Oh, no. um, You're going to get creepy yeah, weird, so, aren't you? 
<laughs> I'm gonna get so weird. I'm gonna be that guy that turns up like dressed in a, a goatskin loincloth and just be like, ah. Uh, <laughs> but I'll also appear from under the table. So I'm gonna get to all of my games like 20 minutes early and just hide somewhere near the table so I can burst out of beast ambush in my loincloth. <laughs> that would be so funny. You just emerge. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so should we jump into some news if that's cool with you both? Um, because there is some news which I think is fun. Uh, like for, from Games Workshop news, uh, we'll, we'll kind of hit that up first. Uh, mm -hmm. We have seen that they are going to be uh, releasing the new Skaven Underworlds Warband, uh, like which is very exciting. These are mm. some phenomenal miniatures. Uh, there is Tiny Rat with Warpstone. They're on. They're going to be on pre-order next week. So that's pretty fun. Uh, we know this is kind of like the preview before we're going. We're going to get skaven uh, as the launch box next summer for age of sigma mm. 4 uh pretty pretty fun warband but ultimately skaven are in such a weird place as an army at the minute you know that a new uh you know that a new series of models is coming out mm. um they probably won't, they won't replace those miniatures but uh it's an odd little uh, it's an odd little pick uh dan any interest in the skaven boys uh I'm, I mean, I have an unbuilt Skaven army because I love conversions and I'm I'm a sucker for it. So I was like, huh, a Molder Scryer Skaven army using like Tyranids and um, uh, Cult Mechanicus. So I was like, hell yeah, here we go. So they're, they're half clipped and half put together and all that jazz as well. I, I dig on Skaven. I dig their whole aesthetic and like their, their lore and their story. Um, but then when I came to putting it together, the disparity between the newer models, even just like clan rats, and then the older models like the plague monks, um, it just it kind of stopped me because I was like, okay, cool. I need to wait for a release. Otherwise, you look at some of these models and the 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 style between them is so vastly different uh, that they it kind of stands out like dogs' balls on the table. <laughs> so. so in, in, which is a very common Australian saying. Yeah, it's very not, common. It's not Australian common here, saying. mate. I just need you to know that. Okay. Well, it's because like a lot of our dogs get they, they get neutered, they get clipped. So when you see a dog with balls, you're like, oh my gosh, like that, that's balls on a dog. Like it stands out to us, okay? Uh, but genuinely, I I dig this warband, and if this is the design way that they're going, I think that it's going to grab a lot of people. But uh, but yeah, I, so I'm I'm all for it. I just want the army to not look like they're too. It's like as if you've got like a prom from the 80s and then a prom from like the 2010s at the same time. And they're all beautiful in their own special way, but I want to love them equally, not separately. I'm not sure, the old, I'm not sure the old ones are, are beautiful. Dom, you got any thoughts on the Skaven? I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably with Dan, to be honest. I, I love Skaven as an army, and like, I think I would happily play it, but I think I'd probably 3D print a Skaven army, to be honest, and, and, and then just buy some of the nicer newer models, like this Warband, because like, it's lovely. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's, the old, it's the old sculpts that put me off, and like knowing there's a new range coming, I feel like yeah. better off holding off. But I reckon when it comes, I think I'd be tempted to invest, because every time I play Skaven, I just think that player is having the best time. Yeah. <laughs> I just... I want to be doing what they're doing. I want to be eating jelly beans every single time I spend the warp token. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be throwing stuff through warp holes. I want to be like doing rolling 4,000 dice with Fang. Well, like, I want that. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I think, think it's just the models that put me off. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. they, you actually, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I feel like most of the Skaven players I see at events are having the best time because they're like, I'm going to find my, my rocket. It's either going to kill you or it's going to kill me. And then they're like, yeah. I'm going to cast this spell. It's either going to kill you or it's going to kill me. And so every time it like, messes you up really bad i'm like oh that sucked and then he's like yep but then they start to pick the model up off the board and i'm like what yeah. are you doing They're like oh it's dead and i'm like oh okay <laughs> cool like that's yeah. that's a game state that i think <laughs> yeah, I, love I love skaven i think skaven would be uh, an incredible army uh to play uh, but I'm going to wait until we obviously see the new book next year and get the new miniatures. Uh, I, like Dan, am also uh, heavy into the beast. I've got a game lined up for Wednesday, which is very exciting. Uh, we also have a team event at the TSN Arena, which, Dom, you might be coming to uh, in two I'm weeks not or not. You're so not. I'm not doing my teammates to go in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that we have a, an event, but there's uh, we've got five teams so far. There's a sixth team uh, needed. And, Dan, I'm kind of tempted 
to just try and round up three ne'er do wells and uh, go to the event myself, uh, which would be really fun. Do so it. yeah, and then award yourself prizes. Yeah, I mean we would win, obviously. Uh, but like, so yeah, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm very tempted. I'm playing Wednesday, which I'm looking forward to. I've got the beasts ready to rock, uh, and then I'm a really hoping. I, I might just try and do it. So that's kind of on my list tomorrow. I still would like some another team to come uh, because being at the event and organizing the events a little bit more of a challenge, but uh, mm -hmm. I could get it sorted. Uh, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay, that, so what, what's, what's your beasts then? Like, oh, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just the list. It's Bella Gore, nine balls, yeah. Ungore, and that's it. It's a perfect list. In my opinion, no. I was, I spent at least at least 45 minutes shouting at her in on Sunday, telling him he should play it. Like, at least. <laughs> minimum. Yeah, he's like, oh, so, I just think corn's a bit boring. I was like, have you ever tried pure fucking fire? Yeah, like, in your veins. Neat. Yeah, when you've got a rot... <laughs> 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 okay, I I won't lie. I've been like I've been dabbling. I'm like, oh, a little try a little cockatrice there. I'll try a little chimera there. Mm, put something meaty in there, Rob. Don't just rely on the ungor. Give yourself some meat to your potatoes. Why? Why would I? Why would I? Why would I do Cause, anything? Because you, right now you're all starchy carbohydrate, and I feel like you need a protein. Listen, listen. Until I look like Dom, which is never. Yeah, then I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, okay, so on to some other news. So Skaven, Skaven's off the bat. Uh, a couple of bits that kind of got missed last week because we were away. Uh, oh, we were a week, week before, whichever. Worlds have had their date announced. So the Age of Sigmar mm -hmm. World Championships have had their date announced. So Which if you is don't... really nice for them because I feel like they've been lonely for a long time. So the fact that they are seeing someone, it just fills me with joy. Yes. Oh yeah, uh, exactly. So uh, Age of Sigmar World was announced and it, the vote went, if you're not aware, Age of Sigmar World Team Championships are teams of eight. Last year there were 24 teams. Don't know how many there'll be this year. Maybe there'll be more. Maybe there'll be more. It's in Amsterdam last year. The, and then this year what happens, it goes to the team captains all vote on um, bids. So the different nations put bids in. You know, like they'll just be like, I don't know, Scotland will be like, it's free haggis every day. Uh, and then, you know, piss up at the brewery and then there'll be some tables. And then Spain's like, it's outside, there's paella. You know, whatever I imagine the, the bids are like. I imagine they're like none of what I just said. Yeah. Um, but then there were multiple different places. It was neck and neck, I think, between Spain and Amsterdam and Amsterdam won it again, which is actually pretty massive news, really, for Tom and the Alliance Open team who ran it last year. Because I don't think I've, I don't think I know of it happening twice mm. in one place before. Uh, which it feels like a real like kind of confidence vote, I think. As an, so, Dom, mm. Dom, you're obviously external this year. Uh, how did you feel about looking at worlds like externally? Yeah, yeah, it was good. I mean, the, the coverage that you did was brilliant. I, I pretty much, I was, I was dog sitting for a full week on my own, <clears throat> and I watched pretty much every game on the big TV, <laughs> streaming your coverage. So it was, it was brilliant. I'm, I'm not surprised it's gone back there to be honest, because everyone I've spoken to, I've heard like nothing but good things about it in terms of the mm -hmm. organisation and like how the day was run and the venue and stuff like that. So yeah, I wasn't that surprised when I heard it, but it was going back to Amsterdam. Um, but yeah, I love, I love following last year, especially the singles as well, as well as the teams. Um, yeah, some really fascinating matchups. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think so. I got to say, massive shout out to uh, Tom and all the guys because they got to be feeling yeah. really, really. They got to feel real confident about that, and they're going to feel uh, pretty nice uh, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, an another bit of news is uh, for Dom specifically. Dom, you got uh, you've been inducted into a national team for the first time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm, I'll be playing for Team England this year um, at Six mm -hmm. Nations, um, which is which is very exciting. I've, I've alongside some good friends as well and some of my teammates, like Hazel's made it. Um, Phil's made it. Russ, I'm good friends with. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got a really exciting looking team to be honest. Yeah, so it should be it should be a really good experience. Okay. Will you stuff. play the trogs? Will you take wow. the trog? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying. It's hard. It's hard to show the benefits of trogs when there's 72 squid kid running around just taking everyone off the table. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm getting there. I am slowly getting there. So. So keep believing. You might see Trogs mm -hmm. at, at Six Nations. Don't yeah. worry. We got we got all, we've got all three of our toes crossed. Um, the yeah. uh, <laughs> the uh, so this so that we Six Nations. So again, if you're not aware, Six Nations is the same format as Worlds. Pretty much, it's eight uh, pr teams of eight, but it's happening this year in the Republic of Ireland, um, being organised over there, and it's Six Nations. So it's Scotland, uh, and to many people, especially in the USA, this will blow your mind. But some of these nations that I'm about to mention are separate nations uh, in many ways. <laughs> England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and Sweden. 
uh, which is kind of an out there pick, uh, which is fun. Uh, so yeah, Six Nations event. Uh, Dom, you got any particular nation you're most excited about playing against? Ooh, I think oh, great question. Like I, I know a lot of Team Wales, and I love them all. So I, I will, I will very much look forward to that matchup. To be honest, with like Matt G and um, and Owen and Dan and, and all of that lot. Um, so that'll be an exciting matchup. But also probably more so like some of the people I've never came across. I've never came across anyone from Team Sweden before. Um, so just looking forward to playing oh. some of them too. But the Wales matchup, I think, will be good because I know they're a bunch of babes. Games. Team Sweden yeah. are just. Just a, a wall to wall, gorgeous the snacks. The best, the best. So yes. good, so good. And all the Irish players are so good. Scotland, everyone's great. Uh, everyone's yeah, yeah. great. Okay, so th- so that that's that news. Dom, congratulations, and to the rest of the team, uh, which is really fun as well. Some other little bits of news. I don't know if you've seen this. So um, on Friday, uh, a video that's going to go on YouTube later this week. Uh, we went through all of the. Uh, the the stats from the last GHB, but specifically the player stats, and we got our like we got our best player in the world or best performing player in the world, uh, Gavin Greiger, all the way over from uh, from the USA Ooh. over that, one of the Harambe's I know one of the Harambe's heroes from uh, from Texas. Uh, Dan uh, Dom, do you keep uh, keep track of the player stats on the TSN? Is that something you've been paying attention to? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I love love following them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've, I've I've I saw Gavin play a few times on your stream actually again at Worlds, and yeah, yeah, phenomenal player. I thought I thought I was mm. decent there, just Sigma, and I watched Gavin, and I spent most of his I think I spent most of his game sort of thinking I'm not really sure what he's doing, and then he just kept on getting all the points, then winning every game, and I was like, fair play. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> he's Neo. He's really Neo. He he sees he yeah. sees the Matrix, <laughs> and so like by the end of the game, he's just like, I've won, and you're like, wait, yeah. but you didn't. <laughs> oh my god i think the biggest thing for me is when you look at his stats he's not done it with one army no like yeah, that's the and that's the thing that i think is is really impressive you know like it's it's and yes you could you know, some people do that because they always just jump on whatever's the most broken but i don't think that's necessarily the case i think he he uses strong armies he uses whatever's in a really strong place but he just how he, he finds really good tech and really good lists that play yeah. the that seem to play the the matchup the not the matchups the the battle plans and the tournaments well so i don't know why he, so he has a saying where he's like i just stand on circles that's his saying like he's just like that's how he wins games i just stand on circles yeah. i wonder if it's some like genetic legacy thing like like you know some of his ancestors were kind of like uh you know uh people that uh explorers into the west and they would uh you know pitch their wagons in circles at the end of each evening and he's just so ingrained in his like texan psychology to just sit on a cir- in a circle that he uh like, that he can't leave <laughs> it's it's either that or his ancestors invented twister <laughs> like it's one of those two things yeah it's just it all of make it make him Make him the perfect circleman, <laughs> uh, which is pretty good. So yeah, we we the last GHB we got to pick all the stats out, and also uh, one of those things that I I highlighted, and again it's another video you can go and check out on YouTube. Uh, just how important we went through the actual army stats as well, and we talked about how vitally important the battle plans were. Um, if you uh, if you actually flick between just two different battle plans, if you were to take Age of Sigmar like win rates as a whole. Um, uh, and then you look at them, and then you clicked one battle plan, the most popular battle plan that was played. Uh, in fact, I can take the opportunity to take this up. Uh, just while I do, Dom, like, it was only battle plans that you loved or loathed from the last GHB. Yeah. Do you know what? Like, so and there was one battle plan that I never, ever won at a tournament. In, my, in three, three, three tournaments with Trogs, I lost this battle plan every time, and it was the it was the one where they were on the very edge. I can't remember what it was called, but there was one in the middle, and there was oh. one at every far edge. Uh, position over power position over that, power that yeah. yeah um and i lost it every single time and it, it made mm. me realize that like just because it wasn't castle friendly and the list mm. that i played was like a castle army with like very little mobility so it's not that i didn't like it but it really didn't like me and it was against three different armies as well i think i played zeech ogres and iron mm. jaw so it wasn't even like there was a common theme it was just the battle plan so every I, time i stepped up in the battle plan i was like here we go it's well that, that, that battle plan was the third most popular battle plan that was played um, but just mm. to kind of give everyone who's watching this YouTube video or the podcast listeners a quick insight. If you look at the, the kind of stats, all like Carajon, Heed Knights, it's all kind of linear. Uh, but then if you just click Jaws of Galette, 
just changes the shape of uh, the win rates. Oh, it should do. Mm. There we go. It does. Just changes the win rate significantly. The top army goes down to a 48% win, uh, mm. win rate army. Uh, some of the other armies get better. OCR Bone Reapers go from... OCR Bone Reapers take an almost 20% dip on that battle plan. Mm. And then if you switch it to the second most battle plan, everything just changes again. And like, <laughs> you know, OCR Bone Reapers get a 20% increase in their win rates. Um, yeah. And I think there's a real good conversation like next year or this year, because it's going to be a year long, uh, to talk about what those battle plans are going to be. Um, and I was, uh, I was quite chuffed with that, like having a little talk through I that. I think the guys collected some great data on that. Yeah. I, I think I'm really excited for this year. Like the more I play, I get to know the battle plans, the more confident I get with, with all of them, the more I'm excited about this year, because I think the last couple of, uh, of GHB seasons, like, like, like you're saying with position over power, the battle tactics and the battle plans absolutely lent into galley vets and galley champions on the last two seasons, respectively. And if you didn't have access to them, or if you didn't have access to the way to remove them, you really suffered we're playing this one like there's i think there's one maybe two battle plans where you get one additional point for a, a locus but there's also battle plans where you get an additional point for killing any wizard not just a locus uh, but they're few and far between and there's there's benefits to locuses but it's not like the whole season is incredibly dependent on them and so for me i'm like great i'd say uh, i i like that balance i like that that there's it doesn't feel like you're like you say with position over power you're like i'm a castle i can never get to these objectives and if you play pure trogs or if you play pure whatever and you're like and i don't have any uh champs or vets or whatever it was champs uh i don't have any chance to go and stand on those objectives and get me the bonus points i'm i'm out you know six points by turn three yeah, yeah it's really it's, it's really interesting i'm quite excited to see uh how we feel you got any favorites so far this season dom at the moment any favorite battle plans so far this season, I think I'll, I'll, the pulse is good fun. I think that's a really yeah. interesting one. How like how they've got to move your army across. Huge the board fan. And a huge one. fan. That one's brilliant. But I also like the ones that really like like challenge you to think about how you're going to start. So the one that was fit for your event the other week, Rob, that I played um, Rob from the stats on um, mm. limited resources where yep. you can only control yeah. the objectives. Like I absolutely love that because it was so, it was a lot to think about. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like it was half what and at what point do I take what objective? But I feel like all the battle plans this edition, the sub-scoring element actually plays a huge mm. impact on it, which I've not necessarily felt in previous GHBs. Like, the idea there's one that if you're behind on points, you get to burn two objectives. So you've got mm. that trade-off. Do you max out the primary early and give yourself an opportunity to just be beating your opponent on points by turn mm. three? Do you score under so you can burn objectives? I think there's lots more decisions to be made by the opponents, which by the players, which I think is only a good thing. So, mm. yeah, but they're, they're all looking good. But big fan of the pulse and limited resource. Yeah, so I think I think also really really healthy for TOs to like look at the stats in three months or so, and yeah. if, you know if yeah. there is a, if there is an army that takes a twenty percent twenty percent dip or increase in that battle plan, and that battle plan is you know, and if they're the top army, definitely include that in your stats, right? Try and like oh sorry in your pack to try and like you know mitigate that like i think that's uh, the frigid zephyr which is the one we can't see yeah. from outside of 12 inches mm. that's going to be really impactful if like cities of sigmar end up being like an amazing gun army for example yeah i think that'd be interesting uh so Have yeah you... like go ahead, i was just going to say like you've run uh an event since like new one GH... you were so the first far GHB. Yeah. yeah you were the first ghb event did just from that one thing, did you find there were any battle plans that people spoke about more positively or like battle plans that you ran that they were like, oh, please, God, never again? Like I think Chris the Pulse. Turns level vibe? No, I think the Pulse yeah. was, was, was immediately a favorite. And then I think yeah. everyone was like, I, like Dom pointed out, I said, was like, I didn't play limited resources correctly. Like, I absolutely did not do mm. that correctly. And I think that's kind of a, and like, th those are interesting. So I think uh, the, the player skill will really showcase on those. And mm. also, because it's a year, um, I think people are going to learn how to play those a little bit better. And we'll have a very stagnant year as well, ultimately. We're going to, the Flesh Eater mm. Courts book, the Cities of Sigmar book, and we got the, the Dawnbringer books. Uh, and that's about mm. it for the, you know, I think for the whole year. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe just after such a frantic start of the year, it'll be very interesting. But 
I think, yeah. Okay, so uh, other bits of news. Uh, I thought I thought what I might start to include in the news section is just little bits of gossip from the community because uh, we're going to try and feature Ooh, lots of guests. Some hot goss. Well, I don't know. So, like, uh, so Dan uh, and Dom, I'm sure, yes, what up, Plymouth Troll Slayers, thanks for resubscribing and saying Trog suck. That's rude. Uh, Dom, I think you've been targeted there. Wow. <laughs> Get him. Get him, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Don't take uh, that. Get him. <laughs> Reach through the screen with those big, beautiful arms of yours and choke the life out of him. So uh, the uh, the the um, uh, the it's pretty it's pretty fair to say soul like grave lords are causing a terror on the tabletops uh, at the moment. Mm. Uh, especially a lot of uh, zombie hordes are really causing uh, a lot of a lot of problems. So my first bit of gossip is: Did you both see how uh, someone who went five this weekend, Tom Guan, our favourite guy? Did you see how Tom was carrying his army around? Dom, I know you've seen it. Dan, do you know how he's carrying his army around? Yeah, it was pretty cheesy. It was it was pretty <laughs> cheesy. Uh, so for podcast listeners uh, on the screen right now, I am uh, talking about 140 zombies in a pizza box. Uh, being transported around the box as well. Like there's <laughs> yeah. there's oil stains on it, and clearly it's from when it was ordered because written in Sharpie next to it is pineapple. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which he... begs the question: did, Was it a ham and pineapple, or did this madman just order a straight pineapple only pizza? What cheese and pineapple? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't say ham and pineapple. Wow. It doesn't say like Hawaiian. It says pineapple. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I've got more this, questions. Well, it actually says thank you, pineapple. So maybe, maybe his gamer oh, name is pineapple. We don't know this. Yeah, <laughs> Dom, are you. How do you feel about if someone turned up to an event, opened up a pizza box, and had an army in it? What would your thoughts be? I, I'd mixed emotions. I think. I think initial <laughs> excitement that the fact I was about to get a pizza, and then disappointment that there was no pizza, and then <laughs> excitement that they came up with such a bit of carry solution. <laughs> it also, it also made me wonder about a new tournament format rob where maybe you can just say there's no point limit on armies but you just bring a pizza box and whatever fits in whatever fits in is what you get to play <laughs> the series, the best list. you've got to be able to close the lid uh... yeah you gotta close the lid yeah close the lid it's the only okay. rule. <laughs> That's that's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. New tournament format. That's uh, coming soon. I like the idea of maybe just any takeaway food boxes. I think would be interesting. You know, like a Chinese takeaway box. There, I see a lot of people use those for their bits, don't they? You order a Chinese or a like, you know, a, an Indian takeaway, and they get those little plastic containers. I see a lot of people use those as their little containers for stuff. Oh, I don't. I've seen mm-hmm. that. All right. So that's a bit of news. I don't know how everyone feels about yeah. this. Dan, you got any thoughts on this? I'm. I. I love it. I just need to know what type of pizza it was. I like, I can't, I'm going to fix it. Every time someone shows me this, see like, yes, the models are painted and they're thrown in there with all the delicate planning of a bull in a China shop. You know, like I, yes, it's a, it's an absolute hot mess, but the biggest mess is not knowing is his nickname pineapple. Uh, was it just pineapple? Was there cheese on the pizza? Was it cheese and pineapple? Was it ham and pineapple? I, I need I need further answers uh, <laughs> um, about the pizza specifically, not about the army in the box. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has said uh, that <laughs> Karazai chicken wings bucket in the chat is a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> that would be a great fit. That would be a great fit. <laughs> Just pull him out. Like, there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I used to use an ice cream tub with kitchen roll to carry my army during second ed days. Uh, Rob in the chat says I keep my horrors in Tupperware. Okay. All my, right. uh, my re- the last LVO I was at, uh, the bloke I was sharing a room with was playing Seraphon with all back when, you know, all the skinks, all the summoning, and he forgot to bring something to, to take it in. So he, he took the ice bucket from our our hotel and just dumped all of his skinks into the ice bucket and then rocked up at his table with just a bucket of skinks uh, for every <laughs> game. And I was like, that's that's a rad vibe. So over here, there's a little bit of a joke in our circle of like, bucket of skinks. Like if anyone's playing Seraphon, we're like, where's your bucket of skinks? Because um, you just, a uh, hotel ice bucket of skinks. And then we was tr- trying to make sure that housekeeping never noticed that the bucket was missing and charged us for an ice bucket. <laughs> I, well, I also like in the chat is, uh, <laughs> someone said, seed Archeon carried around in a literal bin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my Nagash carried around in a literal uh my Nagash carried around in a, a Bob the Builder toolbox. and uh, I've seen an entire army on egg crates. Wow. Okay. All right, this is good. Okay, this is kind of tying in Great with uh, what I want to talk about after, so this is nice. The other bit of news uh, in my community roundup I think is really fun. 
Uh, shout out at the weekend. Superstar uh, won an event. Um, I don't know if you want to... Uh, so did anyone see that the, the Aydneth Deakin this weekend ended up going 5-0? Yes. Did you? Did, Dom, did you see this? Uh, an all-shark no. all Aydneth Deakin army went, went, won wow. an event this week. Wow. Okay, I know. Pretty spicy because Aydneth Deakin haven't been doing very well in the game. Yeah. Uh, however... It's fine. They had their day in the sun with Eel Spam. That's and again, um, for everyone in the chat, I'm just going to showcase that the winner was wearing a full head-to-toe shark suit, uh, beginning start to finish, uh, th for his event. Which I think, again, Baby Shark, he did it. Uh, he was in a Baby Shark outfit, uh, which is great. Now, Dom, a lot of your teammates dress up when they go to events. Yeah, yeah, we do. We try. We try and wear hats that resemble the army. Yeah. So Phil's Phil's got a propeller for his balloon boys. Um, Toby always turns up with a spider hat. I still haven't found the trog one. I bought, I bought, you know, the trolls, like the actual trolls. Mm. Talking. I yeah. bought one of those, but I couldn't get it over my head. Oh, it was ridiculous. So I like, and I, I guess the them. issue with that as well is something that big. If you put it over your ears, you then can't hear your opponent yeah. to communicate yeah. during the game, which does make yeah. it difficult. <laughs> which makes it tricky. Yeah, if I'm just yeah. trusting everything they're doing, but yeah. No, so yeah, but we've got um, yeah, and then Toby came to one of yours in a full um dinosaur suit as well. He did he running head to so, yeah, which was the ultimate uh, commitment to the cause. Seven foot yeah. dinosaur suit. So yeah, I want to yeah. shout out this more of this. Uh, not only not only messaging me ahead of time, also his BCP list. Uh, he did um like. Uh, <laughs> He wrote, you know, when you like, you know, you like space, 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 like mm. equals, equals, equals. And you, I, don't, I can't remember what that's called. It's called like text art or something. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But he'd, yeah. He'd, he'd written a shark at the top of his list. Like he'd draw, drawn a shark in text. <laughs> oh, it's called ACI art. Thank you, chat, uh, at the top. So completely committing to the bit in an insane way is, is what I like. Great. Yeah, that's good. Great. Yeah, so deserves like... everything. Deserves <laughs> everything. Every win, every vote, every double six to charge. Give him it all. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my uh, that's my community roundup section. I think we should add more of these. Although it does require the the HTML community to be a little bit more unhinged. So we've got bits to talk about. I think it's rare we're going to get pizza box and shark outfits, but maybe we will. Not I don't now. Know. Not now. That, now that you've said that, Rob, it's, you've opened the floodgates. Like, like if it, this was to be a gossip episode about like 40k, what would we be gossiping about? That someone cheated in Texas. Like, that's that's their gossip. Like, ooh, poo dice and cheating in Texas. Where for us, our gossip is like, what is it? Pizza box army, shark man win games. Like, that's how. And I'm all for it. Like, this is the hobby I want to be in, right? Like, if I have to choose between those two points of gossip, this is the gossip for me. Might not be the gossip for everybody, but shark man onesie game winner that's that's it that's the headline that i want well so so this is why i invited dom on the show dom thank you for accepting because uh, that segues us quite nicely into like the main topic of today's show um and uh, I, I won't be too heavy-handed on it but one of the things i have noticed uh, and i've mentioned this on maybe last week's show or the show before and i've been mentioning it on the stat show is that i've seen a, a really big cultural shift in a lot of the community and obviously some of that locally and some of that directly because of dom i want to make sure dom gets his kudos here he's a fantastic player and everyone who's ever played him has said he's a treasure and i agree with that statement so dom thanks for coming on because i feel like we're blessed by having you on um but also i think that we're developing a better culture because of people like dom uh people like gareth writing his army notes on his lists um and then uh like all of those things feel like that they're 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 really really positive uh changes so i wanted to talk about how we can be good opponents and also how we can continue to push that cultural positive trend shark suits pizza boxes you know all the fun stuff that we see in our community and what we can do so uh i think maybe we'll, it's a bit nebulous so we'll start low uh well, at the table if you're going to not my events and um uh, we'll talk about uh, what you can do on the tabletop dom kick us off so because you you do really well at events especially best sports and stuff like do you have a a process or are you just an absolute charming motherfucker what's your plan <laughs> first of all mate thanks for those really kind words man that genuinely means a lot um just true i think that, yeah really appreciate it mate I, I, I think the first thing i'd say is like so yeah starting from the beginning i guess is i think that like the, you can you can set a tone for the game like from the very off and i think like having a pre-game conversation with your opponent where you, like you set expectations and you tell them the sort of game that you want and the sort of player you're going to be, I find that is just so helpful because I think it just it sets the expectation for the game that you're about to have with your opponent. So, so I'll always say to my opponent before I play a game, 
especially if I haven't met them before and never played them. I'll say, I just want to let you know, like, I'm just looking forward to a really, really fun game. Um, I'm, I tell them I'm relaxed about take back, so never feel stressed if you get to your movement phase and there's something you forgot to do in your hero phase. Please always just say, and we'll let you go back and do it. Mm. Um, and I always point out to them. I don't like using the term, the term got yours, but I think that's one that is used quite a lot. But I'll always say to them as well, that I'm not about got yours, and I would never expect you to mm. remember all the rules of my army because I barely can. <laughs> so, yeah. so I will never, if you're ever coming into my army and there's a buff there or there's a debuff I've given to you, I will always remind you of it. And I'll stress them I'm not doing that to throw them off or make them change their mind, but just so they've got all the information available to them throughout the game. Um, which and I think just having that first conversation before you even start rolling dice for your opponent just sets like a really nice precedent for the game mm. in terms of sort of game that you want to play and what you can both expect really. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a really key point that maybe when we start, especially talking on, on tabletop behavior, I think uh, one of the things that I I'd like to say that I try myself, but also I think uh, I try and talk to people about is over communication. I think it's actually really hard to over communicate in a game. But it's very easy to under communicate and that's especially hard you know day two fifth game you went drinking the night before you slept in a bed you're not really used to like it's, it can be really hard to be like oh by the way these hit on threes because i've given them plus one i roll my dice okay cool now they're winning on fours because you may be minus one to a wound here we go you know like um even things like that because you know you say something like oh i'm wounded on a four they go don't forget your minus one to wound i'm like oh i factored that in you know you you mm -hmm. have to say i'm wounded on fours because you made me minus one to wound like that yeah. over communication is so difficult but so important mm -hmm. i think is that something you uh, try to follow dom yeah, definitely. I, I think because I, I think about that a lot. Because what I don't want to do, I always think if I tell my opponent, I'm going to like talk them out of what they're about to do, mm -hmm. basically, and if they're actually already happy doing it. But but I, mm -hmm. I always lean on the side of I always lean on the side of over communicating. To be honest, like if I've told mm -hmm. someone, for example, at the start of the game, that if you come within twelve of this model, you minus one to save, and somebody's mm -hmm. made a move on the tabletop to have charged the unit, but they could easily stay out of that twelve inches, and being in mm -hmm. it doesn't benefit them in the slightest. I would have yeah. the assumption there's no reason they would ever want to be there. Like, it makes yeah. no sense to them. So I will say to them, just as a heads up, you're in 12, and I'll just let them nudge their models. And then it also gives them that decision, actually, did I want to be in 12? Because I'm thinking about doing something that I haven't seen. Um, yeah. But I think I always lean towards over-communicating, just so you're not catching people out and they've got all the information to take decisions, essentially. It's, it's a bit like if someone charges and then you notice that they've pulled in, like, one of your big beat stick units because they're within three. Yeah. Now, if I've set up my army so that there's no way for you to charge that unit without getting into three, we've probably already had, you know, like we've had that conversation in the movement phase, like playing for intent. We'll probably talk about that later, but I'd be like, cool. So these guys are here and these guys are here. So there's no way you can get within half an inch of this unit without tagging him into combat as well. But if they had an option to like go a different way or like they've just moved a model too far forward, it actually, it happened in a game I was playing yesterday. A guy charged in the way he'd charge was going to allow me to get a monstrous rampage with his Sylvaneth. And I was like, but you're going to pile in three and then strike and fade away. So just leave that model outside of three, pile in, get your attack and then fade away and you're golden. And he was like, oh yeah, true that makes." And I'm like, yeah, because there's, there's no way that you would do, like there's no reason for you to do that. But then I think on the other side, the thing that's hard and maybe where we have the conversation. Um, so playing with Noblars, for those who haven't played against Noblars, they have a wonderful ability where anytime you finish any kind of move within six of them, so not three, six, on a four up, you take D3 mortal wounds. And it's something that I always tell my opponents, you know, like at the start of the game. And it's something I usually remind them the first couple of times they move into it. But it does get to a point where like if by the end of the game, I'm like, well, this is a core part of my army. This is a really important element of it. And if I just keep reminding my opponent, I never get to use that rule effectively like like unless but it's so it's one of those things where i'm like i usually try to find a, a a nice balance between giving my opponent the keys to the kingdom to beat my army and never let me actually use the elements of my army and not just being like oh but i told you at the you know at the start of the game when i told you all of my rules so fuck you here you go and i think that's uh that's a really important like like trick so usually the balance i find is like like you say like take backs or playing with intent I'll, I'll remind them the first time they move and then the first time they kind of move into that area i'll remind them if they want to move take that move back that's fine but then i usually like kind of around turn three turn four i'll have a conversation where i say hey like just so you know like this is if if it happens again uh i'd really love to use this rule and usually i find if i go that way they're like yeah i get it you know like i because i think it was really interesting rob when we were 
covering worlds, I think you said it at some point, that if you have all the time in the world, you never make a mistake and you probably never lose a game of Warhammer. And I think that's also an element in this, just like chess. Like making a, a tactical mistake, making an error is a part of losing, but there's a difference between someone making a tactical mistake based on decisions they made and making a tactical mistake because you didn't tell them that your, I don't know, corn hero gets to act first and then activate another unit and trap uh, an opponent that just charged, not knowing that your rules were that. Not to be specific. Yeah. Uh, Not uh, to okay. be specific. <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, let's try. Let's get toward. Let's get to that at some point because I think that's worth having a convo about. Uh, I think one of the mm. great conversations uh, to start with is what information should I? Because there'll be people listening to this. I hope, um, <laughs> as I think with every video I make. God, I hope someone listens. Um, <laughs> there'll be people mm. listening, and they'll be. Um, uh, and they'll be asking themselves, what should I say at the start of a game? How should I talk about it? So in my mm. packs, so I'm having my packs amended. So three hour rounds, and I've now instituted that there's a there's a 15 minute uh, chat at the start um, for people. And then the round is two hours, 45 minutes, 15 min minutes mm. to put your terrain out and then have a conversation with your opponent about your armies and about everything yeah. else. So I'll, I'll, I'll hit up some classics, I think, which I think is fair. Number one. I'll always roll my dice um, uh, onto the mat if they don't go like flat on the mat. If they want a train or a model or a card mm. or anything other than the mat, I'm just going to re-roll it. That's my first yeah. bit that I always say. Then all my symbols are sixes, just so you know, because I'm a fucking hardcore conquer player, so I don't mess around. Um, yeah. So okay, yeah. All, all my symbols are sixes, uh, are kind of my basics. Yeah. And then I always say that I'm going to always specify when I'm intending to do something or intending not to do something mm. to, to to be clear on the tabletop. And then I ask you if that's okay. I say, I hope those things are okay with you. And that's how I'd like to play if that's cool with you. Um, mm. uh, like it was normally what I say. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, like uh, Dom, you got any thoughts about what else to include at the beginning? Yeah, no, so I'll, I'll definitely say similar things. I think I think the dice one's a really important one just, just to like set that expectation from the start. Um, because mm -hmm. what you really don't want to do is like a feel bad where someone like rolls a dice on a piece of terrain and they've rolled really well, and then then you have that conversation then. Um, yeah. So, so ironing that one out from the start um, is is really really important. I think yeah, the only the only additional. I mean, I, I really stress on the point of playing to intent, which Dan touched on mm -hmm. before. I always say like I'm a huge fan of, of playing to intent. So if you mm -hmm. tell me that your intent is to be within three inches of your front line, so if I charge you, I'm targeting combat. Um, I think that's fine. Don't worry about like measuring your models to the millimeter and like one limbs outside of three inches. I, I know that's your intent. So I think I think the intent piece um, is a is a is a super important one. Um, and yeah. I normally as well just ask ask my opponent, and this is probably talking more about talking about your army list and what you're playing. I'll always ask them if they've played the army before and how well they know it. And I'll typically base what I tell them on what they tell me they're already happy with. Hmm. So if they've, if they've never played it before. I'll just give them the whole package and I'll really focus on the combos that I would never expect someone to remember. So like a teleport, yeah. I won't tell that separate to the plus two charge. I'll tell them by the yeah. way, it's got the plus two charge and they've got a teleport. So when you're thinking about my charges, I could be coming seven away or annihilators and storm cast off to them. Mm. Don't just think about screening out nine, always think about screening out seven because I can get, yeah. I can get much closer to you. And I'll typically base that pre-game conversation on my army about what they know about the army. And if they mm. already know loads, I'll just pick up on those key bits. But if they know nothing, I'll give them a top level down brief and tell them, don't worry about remembering this. I'll remind you throughout the game anyways. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think one of the things also is to like, is to, because there is, and I think a tactic, I don't want to be uh, unfair to people, but I think some people do this, is they just tell you a lot of fucking stuff at the start. And that's mm. that's almost too yeah. difficult to tell, like, to tell you. You just say, like, when I used mm. to play my Zinch, I'm like, here, these wizards, uh, like, if you're getting 18 inches, they're going to hurt you of the wizards, yeah? And then these yeah. things are 50 wounds, you won't kill them. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. and, and that's kind of where I would go I, with the pink horrors and everything else. They don't need to know that they're going to do... Like, I mean, they do need mm. to know they're going to do 30 shots, but, like, you know, it's not, it's not crucial. It's like, these are really tough, tough to get rid of. Getting 18 inches, mm. I'm going to do loads of murder. And if people are like, I want more info, obviously I'll answer any questions. Yeah. But if they're like, yeah. I'm cool, that's all I need. You're like, good. All right, we can have that conversation. I, I think like another another really good example for me is in the magic phase. If I'm playing against someone who only has like two or three spells, they explain their spells to me. I know what they've got access to and I'm tracking their magic phase with my dispels. I've played against some Zinch players who 
then I don't I don't necessarily know if it's intentional or not. I think it's just that their army is too complicated for it. most brains, even the brains of the people playing it, to understand. Uh, but they're not super clear about where they're at with their spell casting, who they've got, what they've got left, and anything like that. But then, so then when I play someone who where I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and dispel that, they're tracking my dispels or something like that, and they're like, okay, cool, and then. If I, you know, they'll be like, so just remember, I've still got four spells left and one of them is Blizzard, you know, like, or something like that. Like, I've still got four spells left and one of them is this. I really appreciate that because it's like, how slow is our game going to be if every magic phase I'm like, I need your spell list. I need to know where you're at, who's got what, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a point of just like respect between you where it's like they know they're like, there's, I've got two spells you don't want me to get off. I desperately want to get them off, but it would be cheap of me to let you try to dispel this arcane bolt without think, knowing how many spells I have in my pocket. I think uh, I think it's always really fun, in my personal opinion, is uh, when you're playing someone who you both play a lot and then they're like, cast a spell, and, you, and they, you've already got the one unbind, and they're yeah. like, cast a spell, cast a spell, and then they're like, okay, hand a gork, and you're like, okay, now I'll try and stop you. There it is. And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah. I thought yeah. maybe I'd get you, and I'm like, yeah. no. And there is something to that, I think. Uh, I yeah. think there, there is, uh, like, gamesmanship is what we would call it, I think mm. is the right right frame of reference. Yeah. But, like, you, none of the information is hidden, I think, is, is no. kind of key. Yeah. Um, so beginning, so let's, uh, cause someone's asked in the chat, Dr. Demento, and I think this would be a really fun thing to do after this chat, um, mm-hmm. would be to kind of come up with a list of things to ask at the start of a game. Cause there's two things yeah. to ask really. There's two things to do. One of the conversations mm-hmm. we're having is how to be a good opponent yourself, what you can do on mm-hmm. the tabletop. And I guess, and I think this is also true for you, Dom, cause I've seen you literally do this mm-hmm. to people is how to make your opponent be a good sport as well mm. because you can like manage that i think in some ways uh like dom you got any thoughts on that because obviously like i think like you can be fairly effective at making people have a good time like is your process by just being that clear and that informative yeah i, I think so and i think because i i'm a big believer like you get you get back like what you pull out in the world effectively and i think as, as soon as you start if you treat people well at the tabletop and if, you, if you're really clear in your communications and if you give them take backs i've definitely found that it comes back around as well and and, and people will be as receptive to that as, as, as what you are and mm-hmm. i think as well like I, I find as well when you first meet someone at a the tabletop there's always gonna be some a bit of nerves because there's such a range mm-hmm. of people that play this hobby which is mm-hmm. one of the great things about it and like some people love mm-hmm. meeting new people some people are just there for the game but what everyone wants to do is have a good, fun game of Warhammer. That's what everyone's there for at the end of the day. And, mm-hmm. and I'm a big believer that's why everyone gets in this hobby in the first place and what keeps them coming yeah. back. Um, so I think if you if you are just if you just spell out how you're going to play the game and if you play it that way, I'm a big believer and it's definitely infectious. And then you get that back as well because people will mm-hmm. just, just join you on on that on that wavelength essentially. And if you're already fair, they'll be fair. If you give take backs, mm-hmm. they'll give you take backs. And I'm sure there'll be the odd case where that that doesn't happen. Um, but I can honestly say I've had like almost all the games of Sigma I've played, especially mm. like at that competitive level, have been great, and the people I've played yeah. have been really enjoyable to play against. Okay, I've yeah. only ever had a few a few times where for me I was like, oh, I don't think we can I can let a take back happen there, and usually and like again it's about communication. Like I'll have a chat with my opponent before the game, and I'm like like take backs between phases. I'm not going to be like oh, well, you started deploying the guys that don't appear until the end of the movement phase, so you can't move anything else in your army. Like, a lot of that, there's no impact on it. But I, I think the a really easy conversation that I usually have at the start of the game is, like, take backs is cool. If you were absolutely going to do something, like if you, I don't know, miss a heroic action or something, and you just it's obvious that you would have best day ever someone or heroically recovered, even if we're in the combat phase, it'd be like, yeah, well, what, you? there's no reason you wouldn't have done that. But if... Yeah. I think an easy one for me is like if if you're looking at taking back something that would fundamentally change decisions that have been made by both players down the line, that's kind of where you do just have to go like, yeah, that sucks. But because if yeah. if I if I'm like, okay, well, you can take that back, but then I wouldn't have redeployed, which means that you wouldn't have done this. We, like you get to a point where it's like you're rewinding the game state so far. But again, it's like you said at the start, Rob. For me, it's about communication. Like if if it's gonna have that, like the couple of times that's happened for me, like in all of the games that I've played, 
with i it seemed like both myself and my opponent were whichever side it went were pretty chill about it because we're like yeah it's affected too much like that that mistake or that missed trigger or that decision has changed way too much to to just let it slide and half the time when that happens as well someone's like okay well i'll re-roll the charge anyway and you're like yeah cool and then they fail the charge and they're like cool didn't matter but you know like we feel good about doing the right thing i think we should probably uh like uh be a little bit more specific about what we mean by take back because i think that that's a really good like a really good conversation i think like just for everyone at home just so and i just i'm not speaking for you both so if i'm if we're not on the same page let me know what we're talking about is if someone ends the hero phase starts moving the movement phase and then it's like oh we forgot to move endless spells can i do that and then obviously like that's yes if it's yeah if it's i cast a spell i failed it can i take that back that's a no like that's yeah. like we're, we're not talking about that it's more like so i i have this thing which i've been mm. i've been really struggling to write into my event packs but i've talked mm. about it a lot on the stream about maintaining the board state like you have to move the end of spells it's not a conversation like you have to move the end of spells you have to do the battle shock phase it's like oh can i go back and do the battle shock phase no 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 you both have to go back and do the battle shock phase because you just have to do the battle shock phase it's not a yeah, yeah. it's not a may it's you it's you it's you <laughs> yeah. must yeah. so like I, I really believe that um like that that maintenance of board state pretty mm. much covers those issues most yeah. like 99 percent of the time um uh, like it's just like we had to do that so therefore mm. like you know like I, oh i have a command ability or well, command ability is a choice most mm. of the time but you know you have an aura or something yeah. so i think it's worth yeah i think it's worth discussing those things and having a conversation well, i think magic is great for that like magic the card game has a thing where both players are responsible for the board state you're not specifically responsible for your opponent missing their triggers like so say they've got a trigger that benefits them and they forget about it or they miss it you're not responsible for that but like say the board state gets fucked up and a judge comes over and looks at it and they're like okay well both of you have let this board state get to a bad place you both get yellow cards or you both get match losses or you both get a warning because it's like well you 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 as a pair allowed this to happen Mm -hmm. and I, i know that there's there's different bits and pieces and all of that um, but I, I really, I like that. I like that it's like on both players to maintain a fair and it, like a correct board state. It's much easier in Magic, I think, than Warhammer because there's it's a card game that's in front of you and it's a bit more straightforward in like the stack and they can rule a bit more clearly. But I really like that as a vibe. Like I, you, like we we missed the battle shock phase. We have to go back and do it because that is a game state. That's an, an important game state to not miss. You know. I think I think uh, I think that might be like a really good thing because I think some of the bits we'll touch on later is the cultural kind of uh, cornerstones mm. of our community and I think that would be a really good place for us to be as a culture that maintaining board state as Phil has pointed out in the chat you have to pick a battle mm. tactic so you can't yeah. forget to choose a battle tactic so you mm. know like even if you go further down the hero phase if you just have mm. to redo the hero phase do you know what I mean? If yeah. you have to be like, I didn't choose a battle tactic, it'd be like, cool, let's go back to that step. And if we've got to redo the whole thing, then we're just going to redo the whole thing. Uh, but seems... also, as that person's opponent, them missing a battle tactic is on you. Because how have you played your command abilities, your plan for their turn, mm. if you didn't know what their battle tactic was? Yeah, yeah. Like, if I know you're trying to kill a unit, I'm going to redeploy that unit, or I'm going to save something for all-out defense. You don't, If you don't know their battle tactic, you also made a critical mistake. I'd like to add one more thing in to the beginning pre-chat, um, mainly because mm. I hate it, and that's triumphs, okay? Because I do not, like, this is a sportsmanship thing. I lo- hate it when someone rolls a bunch of dice and then they look me in the eyes and they go, how many points is your list? And I'm like, don't ask me now, dick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why did you? My, that's, I, a joke. that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. No, but I'll put my hands up and be like, I play Beasts of Chaos and I absolutely do the bull gore charge thing. So I am 100 points down with that triumph in my list. Mm. And and I'm almost tempted to try and take a second enhancement to take a second triumph. Like, they're they are a fundamental part of your army you need to know about that you have it before you roll dice so start of the game if you rely on a triumph that's where you check it if you forget to check it at the start of the game you don't get to pull it up in back play i think that's fair right but also mainly because i hate that guy that looks at me in the eye turn four 
during a combat phase and it's like by the way yeah do i get plus one yeah. to wound now and you're like oh no yeah yeah <laughs> i think thoughts? it's important as well just to know how triumphs actually work because I, I went to a, a tournament at the start of this year and i thought when you took a triumph enhancement you got the enhanced triumph but you just didn't get the other one unless you were less points mm. so i took a 1995 list with squig here then and i invested in a second triumph and it turns out you only get both triumphs if you're less than your opponent. And I found this yeah. out 10 minutes in the game one. But not my swing right away. And I was like, cool, I hope I play, I hope I play someone who's 2,000 points this weekend because these triumphs are going <laughs> to... That one <laughs> game, you were like, yes! It. Yeah, so don't don't get caught up with that one either because that one, that stuck with me. But yeah, I agree. I think, I think the triumph one is super important because yeah. it also allows both of you to plan as well. And before that big combat phase, you can say... I'm going to pop my plus one the wound now, or before that big battle shock phase, and no one's getting caught out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really important to to figure out who's who's got a time. Definitely, a, a really good thing to think about with with people when people are asking like, what's a list of things to ask at the start of the game? Just ask yourself the question: What would I want to know? Like, what do I want to know? Uh, yeah, about but I think if you're, but if you're not, if you're not experienced enough, like, there's a lot of stuff, like, mm. like, like Dom, like Dom yeah. said, like, there's a not gotcha Warhammer, but there's the opportunity mm. to like uh, not understand what's happening. A good yeah, yeah, a good example would be like, how fast yeah. is that movement unit moves? Like, it moves ten, but actually, it double moves and it's got three d six charge. is a significant difference. Yeah. And we've we kind of talked about that before, but I think I think being a good opponent mm. is also expressing that you know, like how far can that unit charge yeah. all the way? Uh, is is the simplest yeah, the answer? Board. Yeah, the board. The whole yeah. board. The whole board uh, is really helpful. Yeah. So so we've uh, we've established at the beginning of the game. There's like you, we should be communicating a lot, and we should be uh, communicating mm. loads. Um, and then we probably should create ourselves like a pre pre-game list of yeah. things we want to say and things we want to ask as well because i think asking mm. helps them say because they might not be used to saying it yeah. right i think that's fair yeah like, you, you I, know if I you think, ask them how yeah. do you deal with dice is a great question yeah and if they're like i throw yeah. it in the air and i just grab them as they fall <laughs> <you're> like, <laughs> Wow. Okay. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But see, <laughs> I'll yeah. join you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We. I think the thing is, like, I've I've played with people who roll dice in all kinds of different ways, and I know that that sounds like a really silly thing to say, but some people I've played with people who literally like they've got a dice tray, and they just they they flick their dice into the tray. That's just how they kind of do it. And I'm like, okay. And it might seem weird and different to me, but then I'm like, no, that's how they they do it the whole game. Like that's not them being silly or flippant or doing something that's just their how they roll it they are they throwing tossing the dice randomly getting a result yep great like that's super cool but being clear about what the dice result is is like like much like you guys have said i think a lot of people play the unless it's flat on the table or flat in the dice tray it's i'm going to re-roll it like it's not a result regardless of who it's beneficial for um which is, it can be devastating when it's like, you know, it's just that teeny little, dook, like just on the edge of something. And you're like, oh, that's six mortal wounds. That's six mortal wounds. But you're like, I, this is my rule and I'm going to hold myself to it just as much as I want oh, to hold my to it. So the worst. It's, but at the same time, yeah. it, there'll be times when that's a one, you know, like it's, it goes both It's never ways, that. It's I, never that. Yeah, it rolls well into, that, yeah. it always rolls well in terrain and never rolls out yeah. of terrain well. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, I, think <laughs> yeah. Dice, I think the dice like hiding. I think that's the trick. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Yeah, so, that, that was something I picked up from um, the up. first ever time I played Phil Marshall. Uh, so Big Phil was it was it he he taught me the dice the dice tray thing and I've tried to adopt that. And when I, the first thing he said to me when we played was I roll all my dice in this dice tray and you can do that if you want as well. And I did. I adopted the same thing. And he said if anything's ever rolled anywhere else or comes out this tray, it just doesn't count. And that was that was really clean. And he said, if mm. the dice are ever stacked up, we won't count them. So it was yeah. really clear. We both rolled in this Dallas tray. Even if it was a prior roll and we forgot, it didn't count. Even yeah. if it was a six, we had to yeah. move to the Dallas tray. And I, I really respected that. And I, 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 that's why at your event, events, Rob, I'll always roll in the dice tray and then I'll, I'll try to. And then I've started bringing my own dice trays as well because I think that's really just a really clean and easy way to have that conversation and take away all ambiguity of cooking up in the game. Yeah, so we we provide dice trays on every table. Like, not everyone has to use mm. them, but it just it means that they've got the opportunity to do it if they want, um, which I think mm. is like something I wanted to do at the start. I don't take a dice mm. tray myself to events mainly because I'm lazy. I've got a chair and I'm like, I'm sat here. I'm not going there. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but like, I, I I think maybe that's something I could also adopt as well. I think that's super fair. Talking mm. about accoutrements, 
Great word, thank you. Mm. Um, talking about like uh, addendments. Uh, so uh, dice tray, obviously something you can bring along. Dice. Mm -hmm. Now this came up. Dice tokens. We're going to talk about all this stuff now because um, I think this maybe adds to you being a good sport, not like mm -hmm. not the other way around. So. Uh, <laughs> Some people are pro the mixed bag of dice, uh, the symbols on the sixes. You know, I have I have what I would think is classically known now as tournament dice. It's a variety of dice mm -hmm. that I've collected and shared with my friends. Yeah. They're all different colors, uh, and they've all got symbols on the sixes. That is a bit of a clusterfuck for your opponent, if I'm honest. I think I'm aware yeah. of that, but to me, mm -hmm. it's an important factor of kind of like tournament gaming culture that i like um so i don't overly mm. want to do away with that dom do you do you also have that same setup or do you use sets of dice yeah so i i use i use different dice for different things but i, I try mm. and i try whenever i'm rolling I'll, I'll use the same dice for that role so i've got like a set of dice i use for attack and hit rolls i've got loads of them mm. a couple of dice that i'll use for like spell casting um but i'll always try and and be consistent with it because it, it does yeah, it does cause it does definitely cause a lot of a lot of confusion. I remember playing Matt Goldsworth recently, and he played with the dice where on one of them skulls were ones, but on the other one the skulls were sixes. Oh no! And it, was quite, it was semi exciting because I didn't know if my whole army had died or if we just completely win. <laughs> 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 okay, um, all right. Like, Matt Goldsworth is cancelled now, just spotters. so you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was yeah. cancelled yeah. him as a group. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Dom. So you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, I, I always um, I, I think if you can, like, yeah, just try and be con consistent with your dice, and definitely don't go down like ones of have um have pictures on and sixes, just like just yeah. go go one with the other. I'd like to say, important. I'd like to say, as a community, I feel like that that should just be out banned because I think some of this I'm talking yeah. about a cultural standpoint, and I think you should write in an event pack. You cannot have symbols on anything other than one. Like they can all be on ones if you want to be a weirdo, but like threes, mm. but they cannot all be on both banned. I think yeah. is a fair statement. If someone's like, I've got yeah. symbols on different num sides, I'd say, no, thank you. Like, literally, yeah. fuck off. I think that's yeah. a fair statement, I think, as a group. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. I, yes. I just think the, the ones fuck for me that. that make it is, I'm like, as, like, as long as your dice are a consistent size and the symbol is consistently on the same face, put it on the threes. I don't care. But as long as it's consistent, right? Like, as long as you're, you, when you rock up, I don't mind if you've got like, cause a lot of people have one dice from every tournament or every person they've played. So they've got like 50 different colored looking dice. As long as I can see the numbers and I know what the symbol means and it's always the same, I don't care. But a big one for me is that whatever you use to count wounds is not a dice that you roll in yeah. the game. And Completely preferably, pr preferably I want two things. I either want you to not use a dice to count your wounds I want like for me I have uh, tiny little red like gems they're really small I put them next to a miniature so I can never get the wounds I wrong. Knew you're it a gem guy. There's the, there's I'm a gem. <laughs> oh no. They're, they're tiny first time I saw a gem cubes. guy it was the first time I saw a gem guy I was like I honestly was like bro you are so weird. That was my first <laughs> <They're>, response. <laughs> nah, no Rob like, these, if you go if you have a look at I think it's um I think it's green stuff world. They're like, they're minuscule. They're about three millimeters by three millimeters. And it's just a little red blood cube. Put one of those next to him. I know that he's got that many wounds. It's way easier than a dice that someone picks up or knocks or gets hit by another rolled dice. Or have a little thing that your dice, like your D10 or your D20 or whatever you're using, sits in to hold its face. Because I do find that I've had people, whether it's like a D20, and then it, a D20 needs the softest little knock to change its facing. And suddenly it's like in a tournament, I mean, like in a friendly setting, obviously it doesn't matter, but I've, I've had it happen a couple of times in a tournament where I'm like, I'm pretty sure he had 13 wounds on him. And my opponent's like, no, it was 11. How will we know? And I'm like, well, you did what I feel like saying is the sporting thing to do would be like, you failed to track the wounds on your model. So your opponent is correct but it's it's a, a hard argument to have All right don what's your process how do you track wounds yeah so so i, I use a set of dice that i wouldn't use for anything else mm -hmm. uh, in the game so i use stormcast ones when i'm running gits or i run my yeah. the other ones i've got when i'm running when i'm running stormcast um yeah like tracking wounds was the first part of my game that i was really really like when i started playing sigma 18 months mm -hmm. ago two years ago the first part of my game i had to really clean up because it was, it, I just I would move models and genuinely just forget the dice, 
And yeah. I think that's where the risk down comes in because it was honest mistakes every time. Mm-hmm. But I just see a dice on table and just pick it up. And I, I was still learning the rules at the time. Um, but it, it's such an easy thing to get wrong, I think, wound mm-hmm. tracking. So having a set of dice that you would never use for anything except for wound tracking, as soon as mm-hmm. you look at it, you know for a fact um, it's part of that unit. Um, yeah, so, and, and don't yeah. never be afraid to remind your opponent as well. To yeah, I use, I use different sized dice. And they're and they're also all of all of my like dice have uh, pips, and then these dice yeah. have numbers on them, and they're also yeah, squ- and they're also yeah. and they're also square yeah. edged. I think they're Games Workshop dice, like that. I just yeah. like I like Why got not? a load of somehow, and um, when I went yeah. there, and then uh, like so I use those, and those are independently separate from the other dice that I roll, and I don't use my rolling dice mm. um, is yeah. kind of my secret source. So different mm. size and different color. Now, like, and people yeah. use gems, some people use wheels. I got a shout out right now, I don't know if anyone remembers, there was a Kickstarter mm. for the Wound Wang. I don't know if anyone remembers the Wound Wang. Now, the Wound Wang? No, yeah. I need to look, oh, what the... F- we're not sponsored by the wound wang i just want to put that out there um but like there skirmish are, wangs uh yeah, there's right. like, you get different sized wangs that's important the, the that's, wang- a, that's i mean that's a fact of life you do yeah <laughs> yeah like I, someone in the chat said owen said i know the inventor okay so the wound wang um is available if anyone also wants something different i think small How? dice will be fine um yeah. but I mean, uh, the idea of a bunch of cocks with cock rings on them all over the battlefield does fill me with a small, small little bit of joy. Yeah, if you are listening to the podcast, please do Google the Wound Wang. Uh, it is absolutely excellent. Yeah, the, yeah, you can, you can get a you can get a Wound Wang that goes all the way up to one hundred wounds. It's called the Wang Lord, if you want. But the Wang Lord one hundred. <laughs> Okay, so wound tracking is important, and it, you should do something to differentiate your wound tracking. I agree with that as well. Um, I think that's really important. Um, I, I guess that brings, I guess that brings uh, people onto like tokens and such. Tokens, I think, mm. culturally are really good, and also like yeah. everyone in Age Sigma are getting on board with the tokens. And you can make them super cheap, right? You can just have a base with a sticker yeah. on, and you've written plus one to hit. Yeah. Or like, I think, yeah. I think tokens you can do super cheap if you want to. But I think, yeah. I don't want to say tokens should be mandatory, but I'm. I feel like that's okay as a statement, right? I don't know. Dom, do you they use should... tokens? Yeah, I do. And I, I would not be against at all um, making some way of marking up, whether it's a token or, or one thing you can even do is, is buy a, a cheap, um, like like a sheet and just cut it up and just write on it, like cutting the small squares. Yeah. You can write the buffer, put it next to the unit and then wipe it off and put another one on yeah. there. But I, w- I would not be against um, making it mandatory in packs because, yeah, because I think tokens is... In my mind, this makes for such a much better, better mm-hmm. game. I, I've been caught out before where someone's put a put a spell on my unit, and then I've they've had their turn, and I've had two turns, and I've failed the battle tactic because in my movement phase I forgot, which I think is quite a normal thing yeah. to do. A spell that was cast three turns ago, so the unit couldn't yeah. move. I've chosen as yeah. part of the battle tactic, and 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 that that to me, like I mean, you could remind your opponent. I think that's important as well. But having tokens is for me is crucial, so your opponent just can look at the mm-hmm. board state know what's going on, look at their army, know what the debuffs are. And again, it's all about this communication piece and just making sure that your opponent can take decisions yeah. based on all the information. And tokens just add to that greatly, I think. So yeah, huge yeah. fan. I would not begrudge making it mandatory, <laughs> to be honest. I yeah. I like to, and just something that someone I had happen to me and I loved it, so I now do it in all my games, is like I've got tokens for everything and, and I agree we don't need to flog a dead horse over how good they are. It just lets you look at the board and know what's going on. But if I have a debuff spell that I cast on my opponent, I have a token for the unit so that we're not clogging up the board. But then I have a little like card made up, just, you know, like the size of like a playing card that just says that spell so I can give it to my opponent. So they can just look at it like they can read it we're not slapping something on the board that's then taking up a bunch of room but if they're like oh what was that on them again like i don't need to then grab a rule book or do it they can literally just grab it read it and know it in a heartbeat and when someone did that to me i was like gosh that's so cool and now i do it and i've noticed everyone that that i do that to is really appreciative of how easy it is to just maintain what's going on and know what the effects are 
So shout out to Eric in the chat, who is a, a really well-regarded Swedish TO. Also, I'd like to think one of my friends and a superstar. Uh, he says, as a TO mm. judge, I go with, if I go to the table to decide an issue, if there's no token on the board, then there's no effect applied. It's pretty. That's pretty mm. pretty strong stance as a TO and a mm. judge, I think, in many ways. I think that's actually really interesting. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah, tokens, wow. Yeah, like, mm. I, it was only when we really had this conversation, I was like, mandatory, maybe. Like, mm. uh, maybe too probably should be, like, a fair statement. Well, I think now that whenever you buy War Skull cards or a GHB or whatever, what do they always have in the back of them? A token set. And usually a token set for every spell, for every effect, for every whatever, even battle plans and objectives. So we've established that the game is played with tokens. Like, that's that's literally a piece of, if you buy the GHB you get tokens. If you buy the the army stuff, you get tokens. So I think the idea of not playing without them is like, well, okay, cool, but that's not a that's not a piece of the game. Yeah, I think and like, I mean, tokens we're not, are a piece of the game. And again, you can go all the way to getting fancy laser cut gold yeah. engraved tokens. And then you can get to what Dom said where you can just write on a bit of paper. Uh which is yes, mm. shout out to uh, Brett in the chat. Ah! That's just for bread. Sorry, apologies to podcast listeners. I don't know if you've met bread. That's important. Doesn't matter. Anyway, ah, that's for bread. Um, <laughs> thanks, bread. Uh, yeah, you could just write a bit of paper. You don't have to be fancy yeah. and spend all the money, do you? You can just yeah. be cheap and write it down. Mm. Okay, Povo, Povo Hammer is still fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it works. Yeah, um, yeah I would yeah. say. And uh, the question being like, what do you use a token for? Any effect that lasts beyond the phase you're in. I think is the best way to think about it. Like if you cast Mystic Shield, token, because yeah. it's going to last until your next hero phase. But if you cast something that gives a unit plus one to hit and then they shoot in that phase or so, and it all happens and there's no on-term effects, I don't think you need to token that. It's just if it's an effect that lasts for more than a phase, I think is a good way to look at it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so we're pro tokens. Uh, measuring sticks, mm -hmm. I feel like probably should be close to mandatory in many ways. Uh, a nine inch stick mm -hmm. they're so useful the the combat gauges and nine inch sticks mm -hmm. like that just should be yep. in your toolbox anyway right i think but that makes you a better yep. sport and the game's more enjoyable i would say yeah, yeah. especially yeah, if they're all different sure. different shapes you know yeah different sizes if you have some funny mm -hmm. i don't think people have tried to make funny ones I've not seen any of that. They've been quite fairly utilitarian, uh, mm -hmm. the nine-inch sticks. But you could make some funny I feel ones. Like there was a bobo with three and nine-inch uh, uh, penises measuring things that I remember. Um, I don't know if that was funny though. Maybe it was hilarious. I don't know. <laughs> I think you had to. You have to be a certain person to find it hilarious. Uh, uh, shout out to Ricky from Dimensional Cascade. Um, he's in the chat and he actually says something that he finds and I have uh, would agree. Uh, Ricky prints out these amazing battle mats that have like really softly shadow marked in all of the deployment and capture zones. So it's really easy to ignore. But then when you're looking for it, you just see your deployment in a heartbeat and you see where the objectives are in a heartbeat. It's spectacular. So I'd say that's uh, that's a good call there. Like. I there that's that's an upper level that's a high tier level of of uh war dolly possession but damn <laughs> when you play on them they what a are sport, really though. good and really satisfying what if you turned up to a table yeah. and a bloke just had a mat over his shoulder and he's like <laughs> he's like don't worry mate i've got this roll it out he's like look what i bought this is that is good sports actually it's yeah good it's sport. It's yeah. spectacular. You can't bump an objective ring and it can't slide off of anywhere. Yeah. You deploy in a heartbeat and it's really easy. I've played on his mats a number of times. That man has seen the Matrix and created something <laughs> amazing. And apparently, Rob, he does that. Apparently, he robs up and his, he rocks up and he's like, brought my own mat from home. Uh, what a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's I think actually, there's a good thing about measuring sticks as well. It's like oh you can get much closer to the table. Because I always find yeah. like air, air measuring, you often actually end up doing yourself out of movement or like buffs yeah. because obviously you're further away from the table. So I found like I, I invested in some of the ones, the the, um, the magnetized ones where you basically can make them longer or shorter. Mm. And then um, I can't remember who it was I saw uh, playing them. I think it was actually um, Little Marafi, who I think used to be part of Team US. And I saw her using them on stream once. And I thought that's such a great idea because every. Mm. Every move is she roll the free for a run, she's moving ten inches, should take the nine out and clip an inch on the end. And it yeah. was just such a satisfying, clean way of playing. And, and I think you you remove that ambiguity that sometimes a tape measure can make when you're trying to force it into the model of your base and you knock your model and then someone's yeah. getting half an inch. So yeah, I'm a, 
a big fan of measuring sticks. And, and I, actually, when I one thing I'll do is if my opponent doesn't have them, I'll actually give them some of my nine inch ones so they can mark out a teleport. Or when I play Stormcast, I'll actually give them seven inch ones before the game and just yeah. say, you take that. So you can just make sure you, 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 you know, keeping my seven inch deep strike out rather than having to constantly measure it with your tape measure. Also um, like, yeah, like, like, like tape measures are like fairly difficult to use. Like Nathan built me a shelving unit as a professional builder and it's still a bit wonky. And I'm like, if he can't use it, <laughs> <laughs> if he can't use a tape measure and he does it yeah, all day, every well, day. Yeah. yeah. What have we got? And have you yeah. seen those pictures online of uh, the two tape measures side by side and they've got, different, yeah, yeah. They've got different oh, yeah. range. Yeah, yeah, like they're like they're not <laughs> the same. Yeah, and people are like, well, who do we even trust? What is what are measurements anymore? Yeah. What yeah. is distance? Well, that's yeah. I guess that's because the American inch must just be different from the English inch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't it's, know. it's a very angry inch that one. Uh, yeah. but uh, I I think it's interesting that this is a conversation about sports, and it actually feels like it's more a conversation about best practices. Which but that's is, what makes is, you a good sport, right? Exactly, right? And like, I, I just want to like throw it out there if, if anyone's... Because sometimes people, I think, get caught up on like sports, meaning you've got to be nice. I have played a number of people who what I, I would not say were super chipper and friendly and my best mates at the table, but I would play them again in a damn heartbeat because they just played an amazingly competitive, clean game of Warhammer. And they, they had incredible best practices and I'd play them again before I'd play some people that I got on with great, had a really good drink with and I'm now mates with. I'd actually play the best practices people who weren't as friendly first because I it was a much more satisfying game of Warhammer. Mm. I think that's yeah. a, a Dom, have you experienced that like uh, the cleaner games tend to be more enjoyable games? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like when I think of sportsmanship, it's exactly what Dan said. It's about being like a clean, fair, and like like open player, and like celebrating both players' successes and failures. Like mm. not getting so hung up on your own failures, and never never celebrating what your your opponent does well. And, and I think like the big part of that, the clean part, and playing clean is like is, is such a key aspect because you could be playing the nicest person in the world who are like lovely, having an absolute laugh, but if suddenly you've measured the units to be out of threat range, and then all of a sudden they're three inches away from you. Um, because that actually, there's an actual movement just come out of nowhere, then it, it starts becoming far less enjoyable because, like, you then just start questioning every decision made on the tabletop. So the, the yeah. clean, the clean thing, I think, is is crucial. If you're going to do anything to be a good sport, like, be clean. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you one of the things. I'll tell, I'll tell you one of the things I do uh, when I do a charge. These are one of the things that I think are actually really important. So when I roll a charge, or when my opponent rolls a charge, I say, "Hey, can you just stop there?" And let's say they've rolled a ten. Then I'll just simply measure, like I'll be like, "What's the range of your weapon?" They're like, "It's an inch." Cool, and I just measure every unit that's within yeah. four, every model that's within fourteen inches because you've rolled the ten, yeah. you get to pile in yeah. three, you've got an inch. So I'm yeah. like, "Okay, so the maximum is this, right?" And then yeah. you know we'll have a conversation about what you can do, or like if it's on the other side of the board, I'll measure it. Same situation. I'll be like, "Hey, so those units mm. probably can, those models can probably attack, but if you don't mind moving yeah. them, and if you think some of them can't, that's fine." And it gives mm. both people a fair expectation before you get into the piling phase and before you get into the swing phase. Yeah. I think that's. I think like I, I don't see many other people do that. I'm not trying to say I'm uh, like I, like I'm some mm. fucking so, sort of cool dude. I'm just saying I feel that's mm. a really healthy conversation. You roll. I almost feel like it should be necessary. You roll the dice and then you measure like for everyone and then you can be mm. like cool now we can just move our models uh, across the board i feel like that's really good uh, i haven't seen many people do that and i think that's really healthy um mm. uh, and and i've experienced that to be a lot more fun because then i'm not stressed i would just like say to you hey by the way you can only attack yeah. with eight people you yeah. know just fucking do what you like now like i don't mind if they're like moving them 77 inches or whatever i've already we've had the convo so it's great um mm. and that works well for me i don't know if there are other bits like that where that works as well i guess it's maybe redeploys you know because sometimes you'll redeploy a yeah. four but you won't necessarily be able to get seven inches away four inches yeah like if someone's three yeah. yeah but it is it's all just like we were saying it's talking about intent it's measuring and then explaining like measuring checking explaining intent so that when you get to it you're not there you know like it's those feels bad moments where someone rolls their charge and then measures measures and splits hair because they rolled they they needed a seven and they only rolled a six. They felt they didn't really 
you know, like, and so they, they're measuring it and they're like, oh, but I think it's within half an inch or blah, blah, blah. It's a lot easier before the pressure of the dice rolls happened to be like, I needed this. Yeah. And then you roll your dice. I, yeah. I think it just, it keeps it simple. I, I also like really interesting when we're talking about uh, rolling dice and, and like table behavior as well. We, like when you're, you're moving models, I'd say like move with specificity at the start of the game as well as the end. Cause I, I feel like I talk to a lot of people and one thing that they find really annoying is when you play someone and at the start of the game, their movement is, and admittedly it's easy for both players to be lax. There's less pressure on. So it's like, yeah, this and this and this, but then when you get to like round four or five, they're like, okay, so can you, can you just check that for me? Cause this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, just like, don't change your expectations. Or have a consistent, have a consistent Uh, beeline. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. should just be be really clear and really specific about your movement, but absolutely don't like if your opponent's doing that, don't let them get away with it in the first couple of rounds. Just be like, hey mate, would you mind like just double checking that measurement there for me? It just looked a little bit short or a little bit long or something like that. Well, I think that way, the, if it happens in the latter I think rounds, one of the reasons that yeah. one of the reasons that I think Dom is great uh, is because I think mm. Dom's Dom's uh, and it's also true of like a lot of the tough crowd people in the USA because I know that mm. I've got people like Owen in the chat and Phil in the chat and other people yeah. that have been over to the USA. Like th- they have such a, a good kind of like. Uh, cultural like effect on the people mm. around them like a lot of people yeah. we're all making it up as we go along we turn up to a table and be like no one's told me how to do this nicely like you know like uh, I, I i i grew up if you will like playing warhammer fantasy battles in england so like mm. in, in all truth i should have just turned out to be a complete dick on the tabletop <laughs> yeah like which is yeah, pretty much yeah, what that yeah. pretty much what that culture at the top end was um mm. at that time uh, but thankfully, one of my closest friends, Nathan, and he's always been able to uh, get, provide me with better games. And then I've been able to play with other people and have more enjoyable games with, uh, like, and learn how to be a better opponent. I think that's something you have to learn, right? Mm. Um, which I think yeah. is key. Um, uh, we talked about uh, also, I guess, in the movement phase, when you end your move, you should say, hey, by the way, I finished my move. I'm eight inches away. You know, are you cool with that? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's good. Because then you, before you even roll a charge, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, not like after. Uh, which I think is yeah. good. Um, uh, I think that's yeah. a good thing. Anything else, Dom? In that kind of like micro on the table stuff? No, I think I think yeah. The point you, I really like the point you made actually about measuring before a charge. That might, that's something I might actually start adopting because the the way I've typically done it is I finish the charge and then I measure the pile in plus my range of my weapon and I say yeah. to my opponent, right before I pile in, are you happy I can get these four in given they're five inches away? They've got a fringe pile in and a two inch reach. Um, and I think that super helps because then you don't have to worry about the pernickety of piling in and nudge someone's model and then suddenly someone else is in. That that just that just makes it super super clean. Mm. Um, the, I will put on one thing you said there, Rob, actually about like learning, like learning how to be a good opponent. I do actually think that's really that that's like a crucial thing. Like it's okay to have a game where like you don't feel like you've been a good opponent and like you've got a bit down about your dice or something hasn't gone your way or like you feel like mm. your energy dropped because the game was mm. was turned against you. But the key thing is just to like to always learn from it. Like I've got a game that sticks really strongly in my mind, which which I'm like not ashamed to talk about where I've, I played my good friend Toby, who you know, who's like an absolute dream and what and one of my good mm-hmm. friends. And I just I was doing really well with Slayers at the time. I think I'd been to two tournaments, I lost one game. So I'd gone like five and oh, four mm-hmm. one. And I paired into him in a game in the tournament. And he brought spiders, so Gloob Spike gets spiders. So so and, then, and we've always had great games. And he absolutely ran me over to the point where he he was tracking his wounds and he did 144 mortal wounds wow. across across this game. Wow. It was insane. But he he and and after, and I just remember feeling that game like my edge just dropped a little and my head mm. went down and I wasn't I wasn't you know congratulating him on some of his players and mm. stuff. I've I've maybe even made a comment say oh you're rolling really well today. And I remember coming away from that game and just being really disappointed in myself because that was mm. so far from like the player I want to be and the ethos that I try and like try and adopt. I remember thinking actually everyone's human and like it's okay to have a game where that comes, but just learn from mm-hmm. it. And ever since that game, if I ever even feel that slight, I just check myself and say, Do you know what? This mm-hmm. isn't this isn't what it's about. Like this person's playing a great game. They've got themselves mm-hmm. in this position to be able to roll this well, to be able to lift your army off the table. Um mm-hmm. and and that should be celebrated. Not the fact that yeah. I failed to roll four ups. Like that's not that's not the story. Like, the story is that Toby did 144 mortal wounds. And played spiders amazingly, and then came away with what was a really good victory. Um, so, so I think it's just about remembering, like, it's okay to have an off day, 
But yeah, just learn from it. It's also, take that it's, it's also okay. Yeah. It's also okay to be gutted. Like it's okay to yeah, be yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I would even go as far as to say it's okay to be a bit pissed and just be like, "For yeah. fuck's sake!" Yeah. Like, and then you communicate to your parent, be like, "Hey, man, I want you to know I'm taking this really hard emotionally." Like, because I think yeah, that's yeah. another. Like, yeah. and then they just be like, and they'll be like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Like, it's not your fault. Like, you're doing great. Well yeah. done, you. But I, also, fucking exactly. sucks for me, yeah. and I feel bad about it. <laughs> and that's not your opponent's yeah. fault, right? Like, that's I, that's I, cool. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it, interesting you both said it. Like, there's a point I I kind of wrote down as a note to when it was a, like kind of made sense to bring it up, and it kind of makes sense now. Um, you're like, let your opponents celebrate and commiserate, because you know, like, like if you kill Bellacore before he managed to do a Bellacore, uh, or like if you when you do something really awesome, it really yeah. sucks when your opponent is so wrecked and salty about it. And there's a difference I, I feel between being like disappointed and like gutted and being like genuinely salty about the moment. Um, yeah. Like let your opponent celebrate. They're playing a game as well. And it went, it went awesome for them. And if you deny them the ability to enjoy their successes and then expect to be able to enjoy your successes, that's a really messed up attitude to have, you know, like, cause I've played people where when things go well for me, my opponent gets really like shitty and salty. And so I feel bad and I'm like, Oh, I, I actually feel bad about doing well now because it it make it it pisses you off but then when they do something they're like oh yeah wicked that works and i'm like that's that's a cool that's not really cool and so all i'd say <laughs> is like like cuz i'm like i cuz when if my opponent messes me up even when it and i'm like i'll be like oh that sucks that's rad though like it's gr like i, you I know, actually opponent, i actually I'm don't like, think it's rad i want you to know Dan. Yeah, like, yeah. i have I'm to like, fight back I'm a like, lot well, of emotions every time i'm like <laughs> fuck you because <laughs> i'm like i'm like i'm like well that's rad for you i'm like that's so cool like i'm like i this is this sucks for me like i'll tell them yeah. straight up i'll be like this sucks for me my battle plan is wrecked uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go and just have a mental cry right now but sick move you know like like yeah. and i think that's allow your opponent to celebrate so that you can celebrate but also recognize the difference between them getting salty and shitty and having a complete dummy spit so rad. and something something Sorry, no. bad happening yeah and them understandably being disappointed that a, a big thing has gone bad for them in this competitive environment i think it's just about finding balance let you let your opponent celebrate let your opponent commiserate but try not to be the person that is a shitty winner and like rubs it in your opponent's face when it goes really well uh and also don't be a, a sore loser who who just sucks like if you I, I love yelling bleed for me whenever i like cut my opponents like big model monster models or hero like anytime i get into croak i'm just like bleed for me you fucking toad and then like when he gets lifted i'm like lift him back to the pavilion get out of here you big stupid frog uh and like because that's that's a fun moment for me that's celebrating and whatnot yeah uh, but if my opponents then like ah damn i'm not gonna be upset that they lost croak i'd like that they're upset about losing croak because it's such a key piece in their army yeah. yeah i think i think being conscious but that's really hard like i think i think i think mm -hmm. i think uh the emotional conversation about how to play games or be a good opponent is actually a much harder thing to mm -hmm. discuss because mm -hmm. everyone is different everyone's going to respond differently yeah. uh neurodivergency is a thing and that's an important conversation mm -hmm. to always have as well um you know there are people who are really quiet but they might be having an amazing time mm -hmm. and you might be like well they, they were quiet mm -hmm. but they might have had a great time so yeah. i think i think a, a line of best practices is is a much more mm -hmm. healthy convo to have because what it does is it means that at least your game is incredibly clear your game is really clean and then your opponent could like your opponent can only have like lost because of whatever happened like and their emotional reaction to you whether or not that's positive or negative isn't isn't based on your poor play i think that's a fair combo yeah. uh, and i think yeah. that's the best way to be a good sport it's not about being the most funny dude at the party or the most vivacious or even understanding where they're at emotionally because yeah. that could be hard to do as well because some people might look pissed off but they might be having a great time i don't yeah. know yeah like so it, i think that's a hard one to chat about uh, other bits uh if we can go back to dice for on tabletop stuff um uh like when i have dice for a priority mm. role one of the things that I do tend to do is I get all of my dice, not all of my dice, but I get a selection of my dice together. I put them in front of my opponent and I ask them to pick one. Uh, mm. And then I say, you choose which dice. And that's because all my dice are different. And so mm. I don't want them to think I chose the special dice. 
Does that make yeah. sense? Because yeah. I, I think I think that upsets yeah. people. I think like, oh, he kept choosing this red dice, and they may have only mm. chose the red dice one time, but it sticks in yeah. your head psychologically. And then something I did mm. at my last event, which I haven't started to do until now, is mm. I let my opponent choose a dice, and then I say, if I've rolled a six with this dice, which means I've won, you get the dice like so you get to keep you get to keep the dice which is my new thing that i've done right which is super Mm -hmm. fun so when i roll it um if i roll a six they lose a prior probably but they get a dice so it's kind of like a bonus which is like like a shitty like a shitty bonus but uh, that's a new thing i've started doing which is actually quite fun i don't know if you do that dom or you have a special dice i think special dice is the worst right yeah, I think it's yeah. it, it, it's de- it's definitely it's definitely like good to try and avoid them. I think and just just try and use like the same set, set of dice for everything. I I, c- I can be a little lusty about my dice. I've got and it's ever it's, I was gifted some Seraphon ones actually one of your tournaments. Um, Rob from uh, from James. Yeah, Hobbs the um the, the Seraphon player. Yeah, um, and he gave me two Seraphon ones, and I went through a period of time where I would only cast spells with them because I'd convinced myself Seraphon dice are going to cast great spells, <laughs> and they got mm. a stage where I said I need to come away from this because people are going to think I've rocked up with like loaded like seraphon dice especially when that if the first yeah. spell i cast a double six i was actually devastated i was like oh no yeah. I, was like, this is not I, I was like just a three and a four just get the spell off now now i can never use these things again people are yeah you're like cool that done yep yeah, i yeah. i i have uh i have three so my dice are like three lots of 10 club dice from different clubs and different tournaments i've been to and i kind of rotate them depending on like because they're all different colors i've got my alliance open ones from worlds i've got all these different ones so i'll, I'll rotate my 10 diet like the, the groupings of 10 so i've always got 30 dice 10 of each color but i don't have special dice that i roll but i absolutely go through my dice like say i roll for a charge and i fail that charge that if i fail it terribly and then I re-roll and say, I'll put those dice aside. And I'll be like, you're done for the game. You're off. You're done. Like, and like it's, a, and then I'll have dice that like roll hot and I'll put them aside. I'll be like, you're also done. Like you've, you've, you've lost your luck. So there's, but at the same time, that's not me going like fight, picking through and going like, oh, these ones or all oh, these ones. It's more just like me being uh, superstitious about the luck in my groupings of dice when I roll particularly well or particularly shocking. <laughs> okay so uh dice dice maintenance i think we've covered that uh we've had some people put some point in the chats uh, simon has said i remember playing owen at the london gt last year and he had some shocking rolls that's hard to take but for the rest of the event he was super supportive and checked in on my progress it's also what happens mm. after the game that counts the sportsmanship uh that's yeah. quite interesting dom any thoughts on that yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent. Like, I mean, especially, especially if what if you're a really experienced player, round one, for example, and you, and you play someone who's who's brand new to the game. Like, mm-hmm. I, I always make an active effort of going up to them after every game and seeing how it went, and almost being mm-hmm. like, "Oh, did you did you think about this? Did you think about that?" And there was a, yeah. a good example at your event, Rob, when there was Philip. Um, I forget his surname. Sorry, but he came to your event again recently. But I met him for the first time last year. And he was running gits. And if you remember, he discovered at that event that he could battle shock immune as units with like a command <laughs> point. And, and more than once a game. Him, more than once a game. Yeah, more than once a game. Yeah. And so as a gits player, his whole world just changed. <laughs> and he was like, oh, wow. You mean this isn't all going to run away? I was like, no. <laughs> but, then, but then the great thing was, I remember talking to him about a play with the shaman where like you could mm. turn the shaman into a monster. Yes. And it in and roar and all of that jazz. Like, he did it in his final game and he came away mm. like, had, he just had the best time because he'd learned like this this new trick. So I think it's really healthy if you, mm. especially if you meet someone new, but just generally, really, just like if you've gotten well with some of the table or even haven't, like just mm. if, you, if you meet someone in front of the tournament later on, just check yeah. in how they're doing, offer them support. Like, yeah. it's really appreciated. I think that's yeah. good. Okay, so uh, just to recap, like loads of good conversations at the start, continual communication mm-hmm. through the game, tokens and sticks probably close to mandatory mm-hmm. to be a good sport i think that's a yep. let's, let's talk about it in terms of how do i be a good sport if you'd like to be a good sport those things are probably mandatory uh communication about dice mm-hmm. maybe a dice tray is probably mandatory as well in that case mm-hmm. uh those are good things uh reminding your opponent about stuff uh make playing to intent and making sure that thing's expressed uh one of the things that's come up phil's talked about it in the chat so i think we'll cover this now uh can yeah. we talk about talking out games or uh or like the, how games are talked out mm-hmm. i think yeah this is covered isn't it like this is this should be more of like this is a this has been an interesting conversation through the age of sigma community mm. for a few years mm. but like we've talked about when it comes to 
like a cultural shift you know i yeah. feel like clocks and time yeah. should just be a, a a good sport uses half of the time in a game and that's it and they complete a five turn game in that time slot i think that's just a, what a good sport is and does mm. uh, and i think that we don't really need uh, like, we, uh, i'd like everyone's input but effectively i think if we're going to talk I... about it culturally you should use a clock and you should finish the game anything else is yeah. you're not being a good sport probably yeah or and like the thing is if you don't finish your games and you're playing with and you start playing with clocks you'll start to finish your games also because true. you'll very quickly realize that your play style or your understanding or your skill or your pace is too slow and you because suddenly people will lose because they'll clock out on turn three yeah and it'll take them a couple of games but the, the, the thing about clocks, we mentioned it at the top of the show, clocks force mistakes, and that's what I love. Because the, the, if one player gets to play two hours of a round and another player gets to play one, like a, take a Beast of Chaos player, for instance, right? They usually don't have much on the board until turn two, which means if your opponent spends a million years on their turn one, loses priority, spends a million years on their turn two, and you don't have a clock, your Beast of Chaos player, can you can be an hour and a half down before they've even put a model on the board you know like all, you know, that kind of thing mm. so I, I i'm all for clocks i think they're super important uh they really will help tighten up the game even if it's just even if they're not hard official however we maybe should have the conversation about a generic conversation about talking out games because not everywhere is going to apply them and i think there'll probably be a lot of people who are watching or listening who will go to events in the next coming months without clocks and are in a situation where they have to talk it out so maybe a conversation, a brief conversation about best practices around it until clocks can become the universal thing might just help some folks. Yeah, I don't know. Don't want your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely think the clock thing is something we should start adopting more in, in, in definitely in, in, in AOS games. And primarily because I, I think talking out games in Age of Sigma Third, since third edition came around, this is incredibly difficult because it's yeah. such a reactive game. Mm. So it's very easy to say, I move and charge that unit. But what if your opponent rolls a six for a redeploy? Then suddenly you've got to try and make a nine inch charge. And, and what happens if, you know, so th there's mm. just so much to talk about when it comes to talking about games. It, it's it's yeah. incredibly difficult unless you're in turn like five mm. and there's like nothing left on the board and it's obvious and you could only ever score X number of mm. points. But even that's a bit of an uncomfortable position yeah. <laughs> because, like, it's a game of dice, and like, you could roll, you you could roll six ones to hit with like yeah. I've rolled four ones to hit with a dang called Trogoff before. He's doing D three plus three damage, so yeah. I've been in that boat. So to, for me to say to my opponent, this definitely kills that. I would, I would never feel comfortable saying that. So so I, I always try and like to always get through five turns yeah. um, in the game, and if that doesn't happen. You just have to be prepared to have a really honest conversation mm. and just just agree on things that are almost in a certain probability and not start saying, I kill, I, that, yeah. I kill that unit. Just stick to, I stand on there and I take it off you or I run over there and I do this. Don't start getting into yeah. dice rolls, in my opinion, because that's when it gets really difficult. Yeah, I'd, so I'd agree 100%. If you talk out a game, you're talking out the stuff that can't be stopped, the absolute stuff. Cool. Turn five, you've got no models left on the board. I do. I would could score the board. I have this battle tactic. You can't stop me scoring it. I would get five points. That for me is is fair. Uh, if you start talking about well, if I do this and I do this, my my last game yesterday, we got down to turn four, uh, bot bottom of turn four, and my opponent was basically like, I'm going to score the board. The only battle tactic I have is do this and then make a charge. Uh, it was Sylvaneth, so travel through the trees, make a charge, got the spite swarm, and so it was like. And it was so it was literally the question of the battle tactic, a rerollable seven inch charge, and I, and and he was like, "Cool, so I think you get it." Because and I was like, "No, let's reroll the seven. It's one dice roll, and the whole game, like this, your all your turn is is that. So let's roll it." And he re, yeah. he rolled double, sixes twice. So I, he was like, "Cool." It was either he won the game by a point or I won the game by a point, and but it was efficient. But if you're talking out a game, it's only the stuff that happens you only maybe roll a dice if it's like a vital thing like that and that's there's no effect that could be had on it um yeah. and 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 that was it that was the whole conversation i just but don't think i just don't think you should yeah. i just don't think you should yeah. i think i think i don't want to i don't want to say where cuz i want to be real nice but mm. i think for a while a mm. couple of different community leaders 
uh, who have podcasts mm. and YouTube stuff kind of had this conversation about talking out stuff and you should get really yeah. good TOs at events who can who can work out what was going to happen in the game. But like Dom said, yeah. like I just you just can't guarantee those dice are going to happen the way that yeah. you think they're going to happen. Yeah. Um, even you know the most insane things can happen all the time. And I just think and I mm. think like I think in the past I haven't been overly fond of clocks, but now I'm just completely mm. convinced by clocks. I just think it's the right decision. Mm. And as a culture, like as in again as a group of people, a group group of mainly adults. Mm there are some kids as well also yeah. like a kid like imagine like you don't know you're slow you end up playing some 12 yeah. year old kid shout out natty uh like yeah. and then you know uh natty is brilliant on the tabletop and then you know you end up using two hours like you've robbed a kid of like that opportunity mm. like you should just have half of the turn and that should be fair and events should also yeah. allow for that right they should al event uh, yeah. allow for a conversation at the start in their timing and then you should just use a clock and it should just be that should yeah. just be the end of the convo and like and also on the TO as well i've had some games recently where i've like gone to the table and i'm like you two should know that you should be finished yeah whereas you yeah. go downstairs and like you know two fucking chuckle fucks they're like we're on turn three rob i'm like it's fine you didn't even know you could do battle shock more than once yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. Just make, just I mean, make the... up a result and then just give it to me that's okay because the reason... there, there is a conversation about mm. who you're clocking as well right like yeah, but i yeah. think everyone i think as a culture again as a group as a community that's what i'm trying to talk about we all will get better and again this is super mm. important as well the main conversation to have this on today is we really all want to be like dom and mainly that's because dom is better than the whole 40k community so we want to be better <laughs> than 40k that's the whole purpose still him and yeah, vaccinate just, them yeah for just sports. Yeah. dom as a group that's what we want <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I think we've done clocks. Is that is that fair? I think that clocks is covered. I, I I just think like on the conversation about talking it out, the reason it sucks is it's objective, not subjective. Whereas clocks are objective. Like clocks clocks are. Did you time out? Great. The only thing you can do is roll save rolls. That's or I think that's what it was at Worlds. Yeah, uh, and could, mandatory wards. Mandatory wards and save rolls. That's mm -hmm. all all you can roll um once you run out of time and i think that was great because it's like you can't score objectives you can't score points i don't even think you could score your grand strat if you ran out of time because you couldn't score any more yeah. points i think there might be a couple of people in the chat who can correct me if i'm wrong there um but i love that because it's like did you run out of time your game is over hard your game is over and that meant that i loved that most of our games that we covered even went to time went right up to time because people were using it and they probably finished with like three to five minutes still on the clock because people were when they got towards that and they realized they had maybe a little bit more time than they needed they could take that time like they felt comfortable if they had a big turn coming up taking five minutes just to look at the board state and feel confident like i i think that they're so good not only for I, and i think i've put this out there not only for people who maybe need to kick up the bum to play a little bit faster but they're great for people who play fast in a panic to be like oh i'm on my turn three and i've still got an hour and 15 minutes on the clock somehow i did two turns in 15 minutes i can slow down like it goes both ways and i think it's really useful yeah eric in the chat yeah. makes a good point clocks also improve casual games it's way more fun to finish games than not i've been you know when you've traveled to go see a mate you've started playing your game yeah. And, you know, you've had a bit of a pizza beforehand and you're like, oh, my God, it's midnight. We're only on turn three. Yeah. Mm. And it's because you were both fucking around. And like, while yeah. you would have had a great time, it would have been fun to have finished the game. Like, mm. and I think that's always a conversation. Um, well, you could have like, gotten two games in, in the time that you got one. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Like, I, I, you should just, at, at an event, it should just be equal Stevens, yeah. right? I think that's fair. And I think talking out should probably be just done away with. And I know that that's going to yeah. push me up against certain TOs and certain content creators and, and all those other things. And I don't really want to get into, mm. like, a like a bitchy fight about anything. I just think it just seems mm. like the healthiest conversation to have. Um, yeah. Which, again, like Don was saying, having these convos out in the wild is really good and healthy. I think is positive. Yeah. Um, what else? What else can make you a good sport, Dom? What else? What else can we think about? Like we've got, got the beginning of the game, we've got the game, we're timing the game, end mm. of the game. What well, is there anything that can be done around those, around the end? A swap dice. That's a thing. Some people might not want to do yeah. that. 
that's the thing. <laughs> I, 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 I always, I do, I always give people a tiny little mushroom. It's a, a, a plastic one, by the way, not the mushroom. I'm not giving people like. <laughs> <laughs> you just hold um, up a bag. You're like one's yeah, yeah, poison, one's, one's diametric, and one's hallucinatory. Just Go just for your not. life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so like I always give people like a little 3D. I call like it's a, I call it Marv, but it's a tiny little 3D printed mushroom. And I just say, I've got a really great memory of that model. This game, would you do, will you put that on the base of that model and then somehow incorporate it into your army? Um, and, and and people seem to quite enjoy doing that. And I've seen mm. a few people have actually done that in the wild. Like someone sent me a picture of where they'd put Marv the mushroom onto the base of one of their Seraphon characters because I said to them, will you put it on that one? Because I had a that yeah. one gave me an awful time because it killed half my army. <laughs> so put put <laughs> one on there, and they always were nice, and it's it's great. I, um, Pete Brizio, um, he always gives out uh, like a we well, used to give out like it was a, one of the three inch markers with like his Twitter name with his Twitter name on like his club logo. I used to absolutely absolutely love that. Um, and then just generally, I think it's just great to unpack the game um, and just just say how do you think it went? What could we have done differently? Um, but just more talk about the great the great moments and like the stories yeah. as much as we joke about like writing stories and games that's really like what it's all about mm -hmm. and like unpacking some of those fun moments with your opponents i think is always a, a nice way to finish and then just yeah wishing them luck for the rest of the tournament really i think uh, one of my favorite moments from from tournament play in uh in australia was i i used to i haven't done it because i haven't been to that many this year uh I used to make like tiny little objectives for my opponents like and then i'd paint them up like like dwarven objectives so like you know shattered dwarf statues treasure stuff like that uh and i played against a, a dude in his bone splitters uh and he beat me lovely bloke name's jet uh really really friendly guy great game and so at the end i was like i put the objectives down i was like choose one you know like you win so you get to take some dwarf treasure so he was like i'm going to take that one uh and then i came up against him at the next event that i played and he lays out his objective markers, and one of them is mine, but he's Love desecrated that. it with bone splitter fill. Oh, fun. <laughs> uh, and I was like, this is the best moment ever. Like, this is just spectacular. And so we yeah. played the game, and there were definitely moments where I was like, I'm taking that fucking objective back. Like, I am not losing the desecrated dwarf objective, like, across the... It was great. So it's really cool. Like, same with your mushroom. Like, I, it's not... You're not giving away something to buy someone's friendship. You're giving away something to be like, because this is a cool hobby that we all share. And it's weird if you spend three hours playing against someone and create these awesome moments and awesome stories. And then you're like, yep, okay, bye. You know, like it yeah. just... Yeah, it, 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 I mean, there's a certain point where it gets too much. Like, I opened up a, a, a book earlier and I found a spider that Toby had hidden in there. Uh, so that's, that's a different... <laughs> yeah. But, but okay, so let's get into the weird and wonderful now because I think we've covered the tabletop. The weird and the wonderful, right? And there's some really fun stuff you can do because obviously everyone can bring, like... I like, By the way, I also like the idea that you get treasures. I think, like, I think the chronicle of how your games have gone... Um, uh, is also super cool as well yeah. one of the other things i really like is taking photos of my opponents taking photos of games i wish i like i'm mm. now when i do a round time at, at events i've reminded myself to also remind them hey you should take some photos of your games because no, everyone forgets mm. and it's like actually yeah. something it's people something people want to do they just forget mm. to do it um anyway but like let's get to the weird and the wonderful uh like fancy dress uh you know dressing as your army 3d printing stuff because like as a culture like because like, i mean there's that incredible video of tough crowd last year uh oh. like rushing the stage when someone mm. award and again i want to shout out the tough crowd crew specifically so they have this thing if you don't know um and i've tried to adopt it when i'm here now when i run my events that when someone wins an award it's like they've become the fucking emperor of the planet yeah if they've won <laughs> yeah. third place painting yeah just start screaming absolutely start mm. hollering which i think is really valuable that's it's a, infectious a, yeah i yeah, think that's is. infectious mm. i think that's in, that's the thing i like to see more and if you're an event it's gonna feel awkward as shit if you're an event on your own and someone wins third place painting and you're fucking hooping and everyone else is like shut up mate yeah but like, i yeah. think i think we should do that a little bit more right like just start hollering yeah, and whooping yeah. Yeah. so yeah so can I can I uh, go off on a minor sidetrack? Yeah. I guarantee it it's this point. So uh, so when my kid brother turned eighteen and I started taking him out to nightclubs, mm. uh, we would go out and we'd get a couple of drinks, and then I'd be out on the dance floor just dancing my uncoordinated guts out to whatever was on Britney, anything. Like I went hard. 
Uh, and I had the best time and I made tons of friends. First couple of times I went out, my brother awkwardly was like against the wall drinking his drink, just like, what? Yeah, that's, oh no, God, no. Like, why would you do that? And then after like, I think it was the third time he, he joined me and some friends, we were walking home and he was like, you have so much fun. And I was like, yes, yes, I do. And he's like, and everyone just dances with you. And I'm like, yes, because it's, I'm, I'm having fun anyway. So then the next time he came in there, he is like, like <laughs> awkwardly getting his stuff and suddenly he's just having the best time. And then like after however long, it, like I think I, I caught up with him uh, the last, like, you know, it was like a couple of years because it went by and I, I bounced him and he was like, I learned the all the single ladies dance and it is my favorite thing to do at a nightclub. And, and all I'm saying is like that comparison, yes, the first couple of times you do it, you might feel awkward. But it's it's so much fun. It's good. If there's good. an awards ceremony and you go ballistic, you'll have a great time. And yes, other people might look at you and be like, that's weird. But then eventually they'll give it a go because you're having such a good time and they'll have a great time. And slowly the community just becomes this energized and thrilled celebration of success and failure. And that's a, a really positive thing to be a part of. And Tough Crowd absolutely show that off incredibly well. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, they do that really well. I don't know, you haven't been to any Tough Crowd events yet, Don, where some of those guys have been there. But they, I haven't yet, no. They, yeah, it's in the go. But yeah. they, they kick it off, uh, which I think is important. And I think and I think that's that's a really healthy lesson to take away from those guys because they, uh, you know, they they do not be shy. Like you could you could have won yeah. like broke his leg bitch in the event. Like and they will be screaming <laughs> like you became the Love president. That. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it does feel really infectious as well. Like, I think that that's fun. Like, I think celebrating that people did great is so valuable. I remember being at some old Warhammer Fantasy Battle events again. Again, that same crowd of people uh, and like someone mm. would have been like oh yeah well done like, i remember one guy being booed booed like what the fuck <laughs> like it's awful right uh, <laughs> it was the worst uh yeah i didn't like that um what else fancy dress anything else out there that we can change in mm -hmm. the culture that makes the culture better dom I mean, I think this, this this is this is this is possibly a room. This might split the room, but I I, I always name my heroes, which I'm aware can be very unhelpful. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I know this is a room divider, but um, I, it, there's benefits and there's drawbacks. The benefits are that it, it can be fun, and I've genuinely played mm. games where by the end of the game, people are calling my heroes by their names. That happens so much, and to yeah. the point where like. Phil Springer now calls every Madcap Shaman he says Max. He just thinks that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, the war spell? scroll name. They'll <laughs> be like, what spell does your Max know? And the opponent's like, what? And he's like, sorry, <laughs> Madcap. But, um, but the drawback is that when they die, I feel like I lose a piece of myself. But the bigger drawback is I do I do sometimes get in a really bad habit of saying, like, Freddy's going to cast this or Trooper's going to do this. And they're obviously like, who on earth is Freddy? Um, so it's not always the most helpful. But I do feel like naming heroes, I think, can be fun. And like giving them a bit of personality it's not for everyone but i've definitely had times at the table where i've told people the names of my heroes and then they have felt comfortable to just unload the whole narrative of their army on me like oh great this is where my army set this is this and i, I actually love that because I, I genuinely love the hobby side of it of um of warhammer mm -hmm. as well um so that might be a room divider maybe don't put it on your on your lists when you put it on bcp because that isn't helpful but it does not fucking help me yeah. yeah i'm told no. not on yet i'm told <laughs> I, I, <laughs> not on not on your list yes in yeah. game that's my emotional state like probably not on the list probably fair line. Yeah. yeah i reckon like, like, i reckon dude. maybe at the bottom of your list so i don't personally have to read it if i'm doing stats <laughs> um but yeah. like i'm 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 yeah. actually on board with that like i'm not i'm not like i'm on board with that i think ultimately uh because i think i think everything that we like you do you, you're making the thing more engaging for your opponent like and and yeah, if they're not yeah. if they're not cool with it then like I don't know they're probably not that fun like <laughs> no Dom go heavy Ziggy's just just come in with an idea and I want to build on it so Ziggy said uh, you need to put framed pictures of your characters with their names on the table right like they're your yeah. children like they're your family here's the next thing then when they die you sadly just flip the frame face down on I like the table. it I like it just yeah. just go for one of those and uh, and just see see the emotional effect it has on your opponent and if they then stop killing your heroes because they're like you know you're can't on to take away woman. this man's family yeah <laughs> yeah okay no that's not a room divider i'm in i think mandatory <laughs> <laughs> mandatory right alongside tokens tokens and name all your heroes yeah name all your heroes yeah <laughs> I, I, 
Yeah, I um no, I do think I do think writing notes on your list. We, we talked about that on the stats show as well. Yeah. But I think I think that's going to be pretty common. But it's, again, mm. lovely to see. Obviously, people in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, again, Gareth from Old Town Throwdown. A bunch of those people having those things on your list is also really good as well. Uh, and I think that makes the events generally better. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think that's good. I think that's been good kind of like thoughts. I'd love to know what people who are watching like either the Twitch stream or watching this back as a podcast or watching on YouTube think. Uh, because I think there's there's maybe some more to cover. I think there's some good stuff that we could go away as well and create some resources. I think uh, a list of questions to ask at the start of the game would be fun. Uh, I actually yeah. have some clock etiquette stuff. Uh, so Big mm -hmm. Phil wrote me a big list of stuff that I'm going to turn into a video later in the week um, because I think like that's one of those other scary things like when do I press the clock? Who is doing mm. the clock? Like, yeah, uh, which I yeah. think is fun as well. Um, and also, I'm not sure people re even know what the clock looks like. I think they think that there's an actual like clock that, that you move the hand. And I'm like, no, that's not what that is. It's, not, it's not. It's actually an aggressive person beside you. Like they yeah. stand there with a big clock hanging around their neck, and then they just slap the dice out of your hand when you run out of time. Oh, that's actually something. Do you think? Sorry, I should bring this up. Do you think you should bring a physical copy of your lists and and rules? I don't think so. In my opinion. No. Nah, so yeah, I, I I normally I, I'll normally like give if if someone's got a rules question, I'll normally give them access to the app on my phone if they don't mm -hmm. have it, or I yeah. I bring war scroll cards. But that's a very personal thing. I'll often give give the war scrolls to my opponent if they want them. Be like, you have this because I know the rules. If you have, if you everyone just look what a unit does because you don't want to give away to me that you're going to go and engage or something like that. Please have a look. But yeah, I don't. I, I would typically be like not. Are saying that people have to bring paper lists anymore both for the, from an environmental standpoint <laughs> but also just because they're not um, yeah. they're not really that needed anymore and and yeah the books i think you can get the rules i would then. say yeah. i would say you don't need your list but you need to be able I, like if i ask i want to be able to see your list submitted or how it's gone or like like you say like you've got it on a bit of paper or that there was a list document released at the start which in that case you like the players should have it themselves we've all got phones or whatever uh, the one thing I do want is for people to be able to show me some form of official correct version of their rules and war scrolls. Like that's the only thing I like, because I've had it a couple of times where I asked, uh, it was, it was all, like an addition or two ago. And I was asking someone about the Nurgle wheel or, or whatnot, like what specifically the, the wording was. And they were like, Oh, well it's this. And I'm like, I'd love to see the wording. And they were like, well, I didn't bring my battle tome. And I was like, okay, so but then I, how do, can you show me the rule? And like, I think this was, this was back before Wahapedia was particularly common. But that is and there now, right? Because so this, this conversation is yeah, like yeah. done. But, but, but that's what I mean. Like if you don't have access to some way like that to show your opponent your rules, you, like it's on you to be able to, because for instance, you could have somebody, some uh, lovely human being who's not technologically savvy and so if you then rock up and you're like, I didn't bring a phone, I didn't bring anything, I have no way to get to my rules. Like, you need a way to show someone else your rules. Whatever that is, that's fine, but it's not on them to have access to your rules. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I just don't think that it's a thing. Like, we, mm. like someone's like, I can't believe that you haven't got your war scroll. I'm like, bro, all the war scrolls are free on the app, and Wahapedia's mm. there. You have to literally be a Philistine and also, why are you at this event if you don't know where rules are? Like, yeah. the, like, like, I, I, I honestly don't think it's a thing anymore. If they were like mm. really hard locked behind like paywalls, you know, GW yeah. had them, and you know, each one was really expensive. Mm. But they're just available everywhere. Like, yeah. I, I really do think that. And also, me as a TO, if I, someone's mm. like Rob, I'm not sure what this is. I go look at the FAQ. I'm going to do the same thing someone else is going to do, which is go yeah. to warhammercommunity.com and read the FAQ. Yeah. There is no other place where that's like. And also, I don't own a printer, and I don't think I've owned a printer for like mm. 20 years. Like, I don't even know when if printers are cool, but I've never owned a printer. They were. I don't think they were ever cool, Rob. Like, no one was like, "Oh, check out my desk jet." Like, it no, was never I, like I, a. I think at one point, I think we're too young for it. But I think at one point, like, the the Xerox place, like the copy place, was like a thing. <laughs> I think that was a thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I saw but it I, I just, I, I agree. I don't think it comes up often, but I just think that it's not on your opponent to have access to your rules. Like I, I, if if they, if someone asks, even if I'm just pulling up Wahapedia on my phone and showing them, it's not on them. Like it's not for me to be like fucking figure it out, mate. 
Like it's on it's on me to be able to show off my oh, rules, yeah, whether that's course. on a battle tome, whether that's on Wahapedia, however that is, you just need to be able to, if asked, show someone your rules. That's it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yes, of course. Because you could, but if you don't have internet, you can always like, or well, you don't have internet at the venue. Someone say you can yeah. always be at home, just screen cap, screen cap each of the wire pages. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then you're you're there yeah, and yeah. you're sorted, right? Uh, which is yeah. nice. Um, uh, okay, all right. I think we've done great there, uh, and I think there's some really good stuff, and I think there's some good conversations, healthy conversations, and hopefully we see the agency mark community get a little bit weirder, a little bit uh, like a little bit better mm. as well, because ultimately we just like we're not as big as 40k but we can just be better mm. than 40k and that's so yeah. important like re we already are but let's show them let's like prove it mm. right as a group i think is healthy uh dom anyone you want to shout mm. out before we head out today um i'll probably just shout out my my name's fail team mates my, my warhammer family um yeah so combination of taught me how to even play the game um, but yeah, we we just we got a lot of events together, and we very very much feels like we're a little family now. Um, so I'll, I'll shout them all out. Okay, lovely. And like I've said, I'm going to include all that in the show notes. If anyone wants to check that out, please do. Uh, Dan, what about you? Uh, I'm going to shout out the Warp Dice crew just for being generally gorgeous, uh, and for the Meat King uh, himself. He knows who he is, uh, and his spectacular mustache. Uh, that's, um, that's, okay. that's that's it. The that's Meat it. King. Who have Meat you been King. playing? Why do you look so happy? You've been playing Warhammer this week and you're looking like fucking fully flushed. What have you yeah, been doing? Yeah, because I'm playing Warhammer. It makes me happy. I'm full of joy, Rob. I'm exuberant. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's, uh, it's, and and I, I got to watch a bunch of big ogres led by a man with a spectacular mustache smash up other armies and then his dice are custom printed to have a spectacular mustache on the six. Like, I'm just, I'm living in a happy place. <laughs> don't don't knock you down all right well well thank you to dan and dom dan and dom uh for being on the show wonderful people uh both of them and i don't think you could get uh, other than having nathan here like nathan was meant to be here obviously but he 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 wasn't here for today and that would have been perfect you would have had three treasures and then me the salty conquer in the corner uh like leading the convo so thank you to to both of you dan and dom for being good examples and nathan i shout nathan out he's always been my best example of how to play a game not fast but well uh which well. is <laughs> never fast but always well uh, and i mean rob him. also shout out to you for running a, a ridiculous number of events and so allowing to put into practice a lot of the things that you're talking about and it's interesting like we talk about uh oh yeah well this and oh yeah that but your conversation is like i'm putting it into a pack like we're just we're we're having esoteric conversations about how we feel and then you're going here's how i make it a real thing so well, there's a difference between the thinkers and the doers, I think. Oh, yeah, but there's lots of there's but there's lots of people out there that are doing it, which I think is so good. Like I think mm. like I think like uh, like me as a as a creator, TO or whatever, and as a player, uh, has been inspired by people like Dom, uh, by like the tough crowd guys, a wholesale, mm. you know, uh, writing notes on your list like like Gareth, like all sorts of people, and, and I think that's one mm. of those really healthy things as a community that we can do, which is learn from each other. Like I'm not like and and then just build a better space for each other as well like fuck like if i go to an event and there's like nothing in a pack and some knobhead like ends up ruining my day by being incredibly slow i just go straight to tia but like why isn't there like clocks in the pack yeah they were like uh all like you know i tried to do a clock and the opponent's like i don't want to use a clock and tia's like you don't use a clock i'm like i swear to god if he doesn't finish fast i'm gonna put you on blast forever yeah so get ready yeah like because like do you know what i mean like it's our responsibility as a group to yeah. to make things better yeah. Um, and I think that's really healthy as well. Like create positive spaces. It was pride recently. So obviously, you know, uh, be good allies to everyone in communities mm -hmm. that are marginalized in whatever regard that might be. Make sure that we have create safe spaces for those people. That's super important as well. Like those, it, which I almost think should be mandatory in the pack as well. Like this is an inclusive space. If you don't feel like being inclusive of part of who you are, don't mm -hmm. come into our space. Like it feels like it's something that should be included in packs, but it's only because mm -hmm. everyone else in the community makes it good. So oh fucking mm -hmm. hell, such a speech at the end. What a if you'd like to support the show uh don't that's my answer 
Uh, that's how I would end this. <laughs> but if you really want to piss off Rob, if you really want to piss him off, sign up to the Patreon. Uh, <laughs> make him accountable. <laughs> and then start polls about what content you want him to make and force him to make Cruel Boys related content. Uh, like, they're doing really well at the minute, just FYI. I know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, the um, uh, thank you for tuning in. Leave comments, like, subscribe, and all those other things. And most importantly, have a great time with your local friends, having fun and all those other things. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.